Sullivan Stadium, home of the New England Patriots of the NFL, and today, home of the Eastern Massachusetts Division I Super Bowl between the Dedham High School Marauders and the Brockton High School Boxers. Welcome to the Super Bowl 88 pregame show. I'm Steve Valley, and in the next 20 minutes, I will preview both the Dedham High School Marauders and the Brockton High School Boxers. The Dedham Marauders come in today's game as the Bay State League champs with a perfect 10-0 record for the season. Also, they have a 19-game winning streak on the line today. They breezed through their regular season schedule and ended up the number one ranked high school football team in eastern Massachusetts, which ultimately gave them the school's first Super Bowl berth since the ritual began in 1972. Dedham started the season with a non-league victory over the Weymouth South Wildcats, 14 to zip. Then they went on to defeat the Natick Redmen for the second time in a row, 26 to 14. Next, they outpowered Framingham North 41-6 before traveling to Walpole for a hard-fought 7-6 victory over the previously undefeated Rebels. Denham then made a sweep of the Framinghams with a 21-6 victory over Framingham South to go 5-0 in the season. The Marauders then took a tight game against Bay State League foe Braintree 10-zip while demolishing a weak Wellesley team by a score of 42-7. Dedham also had a laugh for the following week by whipping Milton 33 to zip and then out muscling Needham 21 to 15, which set up the Turkey Day showdown against Norwood as Dedham rolled to a 37 to 7 victory, bringing the Marauders to the Super Bowl today. Dedham's head coach is Bob Lynch, who in seven seasons has a master record of 32 35 with three ties. Now let's meet the Dedham Marauders starting unit, beginning with the team's outstanding defense, which allowed only 55 points this entire season. Joe Connor, defensive end, senior. Mike Ma, defensive tackle, senior. Bill Coonhan, nose guard, junior. Paul Lefswich, defensive tackle, senior. Steve Poles, defensive end, senior. Dave Flynn, linebacker, senior. Mark Scale, linebacker, senior. Matt Pellegrini, linebacker, junior. Bill Kallenberg, strong safety, senior. <laughs> Frank Musto, defensive back, senior. You got a moment. Derek Swain, free safety, junior. Luciano, defensive back, senior. Dedham's defense relies on teamwork, though there were many outstanding players throughout the season, as Bob Lynch explains. As a guy who had the penalty call. The past two years, the strongest part of our team has been our defense. I think in the last 20 games, we've only given up 105 points, which is probably about 5.1 points per game. Uh, I think the key of the defense is more that the teamwork rather than individual standouts, even though we do have some. Uh, if you look for individual standouts, you'd probably start with our nose man, Billy Cunahan, who's uh, just an unbelievable ball player. He's one of the most uh, dedicated and uh, plays with just 100% uh, every, every play. Uh, tackles, we've rotated three kids in tackles. Uh, unfortunately, one of them is hurt. Uh, junior Joe Pacello, he hurt himself in our ninth game, and he's not going to be able to play in the Super Bowl. 
uh, but we'll be using uh, Paul Lepsevich and uh, Mike Meyer at tackles. They're both seniors. Uh, uh, defensive ends, uh, we've used uh, Joe O'Connor and Steve Coles, and they've done a very good job. Our linebackers have been, uh, we rotate three, and two of them have been real pleasant pl surprises. Uh, the first one is our captain, Dave Flynn, who was a, a solid veteran at linebacker, but because of the play of the other two, we were able to rest them a little on defense. Uh, the other two was senior Mark Scahill, who just had a great year for us. And the other one, Matt Pellegrini, is just a very, very talented athlete, and he's improved as the year goes on. Our defensive backfield has been uh, one of our strongest points. Uh, we had two returning defensive halfbacks, Billy Buciano and Franco Musto, have played real well. I think uh, each of them have around five interceptions. Uh, our free safety, we've had different people back there, depending on what we expect from teams. Uh, we've had Derek Sawoyer, uh, we've had Bobby Doherty, and they've both done a very fine job for us. Uh, strong safety is Billy Karrenberg, who's also had an excellent year. The Marauder offense is anchored by senior Dave Flynn, but one player doesn't win games alone, so now let's meet the starting unit of the Dedham offense. Steve Poles, tight end senior. Paul Caffrey, tackle senior. Paul Lepsovich, right guard, senior. Mike Ma, center, senior. Dino Rizzi, junior, left guard. Cosmo Cucinata, left tackle, senior. Wes Smolak, tight end, senior. Frank Musto, wing back, senior. Derek Swyatt, tailback, junior. Mike Evans, senior quarterback. Dave Flynn, fullback, senior. Uh, coming back this year, one of the uh, experienced parts of our team was our offensive line. Uh, we returned five of the seven on the offensive line. Paul Lepsovich at, at right guard was probably one of our better blockers. He was all league last year and hopefully he'll be all league this year. Uh, our center Michael Maher is a th three year starter. Uh, he's done a great job for us. Our two tackles, uh, Paul Caffrey and Cosmo Cucinata have both played very, very well. Last year it was sort of a learning year but they did a super job and, and they continued on this year. Cosmo's had a great year uh, playing left tackle. Uh, our left end, when we go two tight ends, is Buster Smolak, and again, he's a returning starter, and he's, he hasn't caught a whole lot of passes, but he's a very fine blocker. Uh, our other tight end, Steve Poles, has come in and caught five touchdown passes and done a nice job this year for us. And left guard has been Dino Rizzi, and he does a, uh, a nice job. He's a, a junior, and as he, as he has gone on, he's got better and better, and they've done a nice job. And then we have Billy Cunahan that plays all the positions, and wherever we want him, he ends up playing. If we need a guard, he plays guard. If we need a tackle, he plays tackle. In the backfield, everyone knows Dave Flynn, and he's the heart and soul and the, the leader of our team. Uh, he plays with reckless abandon. Uh, he just forces you to tackle him uh, with four or five guys, and he just give me the football coach, and you know we go on his back. Uh, tailback Derek Swoy has had a very fine year. He's rushed for almost 600 yards. He's, I think he's caught 17 or 18 passes for uh, close to 300 yards. Uh, he's got good speed, and he's made some great, great catches, key catches. Uh, and plus, he gives a little speed off David. You know, after you're hitting David, and then all of a sudden, Derek's got some real good speed, the fastest kid we've ever had in our backfield. Uh, our wingbacks, we've had Joe O'Connor and Franco Musto, and they've done a, uh, a super job catching the ball and blocking on whatever we ask for. And then our quarterback. Uh, when you look at our quarterback, he's five foot eight, 145 pounds. Uh, but all he does is seem to win the football games for us. He's as a starter, he's 19 and 0, uh, and he's just done a super job. He he makes things happen. He's a smart ball player. He throws the ball in the right place. I know there's tons of quarterbacks that can throw the ball farther, but not always in the right place. In terms of handoff, if there's a muff up on the handoff, he adjusts and does the things correctly. And he he's sort of been perfect for two years for us, and uh, we're very happy with him. Brockton boxers are no strangers to the Super Bowl. They have been here eight times, sporting a 5-3 and three record. The boxers were the number one ranked high school football team in the country until they suffered their first loss in two seasons at the hands of the Lemister Blue Devils. The boxers finished their season with a 9-1 and one record, making them the number two ranked high school football team in eastern Massachusetts, which brought them here to Sullivan Stadium today for the Super Bowl. 
The Boxers started the season defending their national number one ranking by beating three out-of-state teams. First came the 28-24 victory against Rome Free Academy in Syracuse, New York. Brockton was at home next week trouncing Baltimore Polytech 21-7 before rolling over Sachem High School from Long Island, New York 35-7. Brockton then went on to defeat a pair of Division II teams as the Boxers squeaked out a 21-6 victory over BC High before running to a 52-17 victory over Severian. Brockton won its first Suburban League game of the year, drubbing Cambridge 48 to nothing, while on that cold Friday night in Leominster, the Boxers lost to the Blue Devils 27 to 12. Brockton rebounded well from the loss and crushed Newton North 48 to 18, and then went on to trample Brookline 40 to 6, setting the stage for the Thanksgiving Day showdown against Waltham, as Brockton clipped the Hawks 58 to 13 to gain a berth in today's Super Bowl. Brockton's head coach is Armin Colombo, who in 20 years has a master record of 165 wins, 25 losses, and one tie. Now let's meet the Brockton starting defensive unit. Remaster defensive end senior. Chris Murphy, tackle senior. Andy Lewis, guard junior. <laughs> David Grind, guard, junior. Michael Lewis, tackle, senior. <laughs> Chris Campbell, defensive end, sophomore. <laughs> Mike Thorson, linebacker, senior. <laughs> Rudy Harris, senior, defensive end. defensive line, senior. Jim Ballard, kick guy, junior. Adam Williams, defensive back, sophomore. Joe Damari, defensive back, senior. <laughs> Cole McCoy, defensive back, senior. Steve Marciano, defensive back, junior. Jim McGillis, defensive back, senior. The boxers' defense used their experience, size, and speed to have an outstanding season, as Armin Colombo explains. The uh, defensive team has, has done the job really all year long, and uh, we, uh, that probably was going to be a little bit of a question mark when, when we came in, but uh, the defensive line, uh, we, have, uh, we have a unit uh, where we use uh, ends and uh, Eric Drukas and uh, Chris Campbell and Ray Marshall and then when need be and uh, we've used them on uh, several occasions Rudy Harris at the ends have done an outstanding job. Uh, the defensive down men have been led by uh, Chris Murphy who's a three-year regular and he has done unbelievable work for us uh, but besides Chris the down men that we have used uh, David Grine a junior who's done an outstanding job and uh, Tony Lewis has done a fantastic job for us as well. And Bobby Toll, uh, we've used in key situations, especially when we want some movement and we want to get at the passer. Uh, the linebacking uh, has been taken care of by, uh, primarily by our all scholastic uh, Mike Thorson, who's just done an un uh, unbelievable job for us the past three years. I've mentioned before that the uh, offensive uh, uh, backfield is well known and they do great things, but I would put our defensive backfield in the same category. We'll see that. Brockton's well, offense uh, revolves horses, around the heralded backfield Harris. tandem of Rudy room. Harris and Darnell Campbell. He would, he but will. there are other pistons that fuel this scoring machine. Leon Stephson, tight end, senior. <laughs> Michael Lewis, senior tackle. Janicle is right guard, junior. Mike Dawson, center, senior. Jim Kelleher, guard, senior. David Grind, tackle, junior. Steve Marciano, wide receiver. Bob Zerunzi's quarterback, junior. Donnell Campbell, senior, running back. <laughs> Judy Harris, running back, senior. Tony Grace, 
wide receiver, senior. Leon Stephenson, who, a guy who came out of nowhere, has been at uh, tight end all year long and has done an unbelievable job of blocking for the off tackle. And our two tackles, uh, Mike Lewis, uh, a great football player. He's big, strong, but he does the job, and he's a great leader. And the other side has been taken care of by Chris Murphy when he's been well, and David Grine, who's been playing there lately. And uh, the tackles have handled every team that we've, ha that we've played this year. And the offensive guards are second to none as far as I'm concerned. And that's Jim Kelleher at left uh, uh, guard, a uh, senior, and uh, Peter Giannikoulis, uh, our right guard. Of course, the center for the past three years, and uh, again this year, outstanding, uh, all scholastic type work, uh, and that's Mike Thorson. The guy who probably hasn't received as much attention as the other guys has been uh, uh, Bobby Zorinskis. And Bobby has been there when we've needed him. And Bobby has had an outstanding two years, and uh, he's coming back next year, and he should even do better. And the wide receivers, Steve Marciano, and Tony DeGrace, each one offensively, not only do they catch the ball, but they, uh, they, they block as well. They realize the importance of it, and they've become excellent downfield blockers, and they've contributed to our offensive output. And, of course, the guys, last but not by no means least, uh, Rudy Harris and Donnell Campbell, they have been a, a Brockton High tradition for the past three years. Rudy has been a four-year regular, counting his freshman year as a defensive end. And Rudy, incidentally, is the first... Uh, one who can say that he's participated as a regular in three Super Bowls, which is a great accomplishment. He, of course, he's been a vital part of all three. And the two of them together, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best uh, twosome that we have had at Brockton, really, uh, collectively. And uh, I'm proud of what they've done. And uh, uh, all of the guys have just done a great, great job for us. Both teams got to Sullivan Stadium for today's Super Bowl with stingy defenses and exploding offenses. Neither coach plans to change their game plan for today's game. Our concerns about the uh, Brockton game, obviously, is the fact that we've got to stop the two backs and stop the, I think it's the Serinkus to Marciano combination, which is an excellent combination. And probably the next concern is size because uh, physically they're much, much bigger than we are. I think uh, each of the backs are bigger than anyone we have on our team. Well, I think what you find as far as strategy in the Super Bowl, uh, teams uh, just uh, decide more or less that what we, what we did to get here, we're going to continue to do. Uh, let's face it, Dedham is undefeated, and uh, they're not about to change anything uh, at this particular point in time, and neither are we. Uh, both teams have had outstanding seasons, and uh, it would just stand to reason that uh, what got you there is what you're going to use. You make some adjustments, and, and, and you, you try to do a few different things and but we we got to go with what what our what our kids do best and that's what we're going to try to do and hopefully it's it's good enough the Dedham marauders keys to victory are as follows first they have to keep their defense off of the field this means that the Dedham offense has to be able to move the brockton defense and drive steadily throughout the game secondly Dedham must control the lines of scrimmage the Marauders cannot let the substantial size difference affect their mental or physical play on either side of the ball. And thirdly, Dedham has to score early in this game, as Brockton's defense usually gets stronger as the game progresses into the second half. And now the Brockton Boxers' keys to victory. First, they have to establish their running game early in the contest. No team this season has stopped the Brockton rushing attack, as this is the biggest part of the Boxers' game plan. Secondly, Brockton has been very successful this season when using their ball control offense. This takes up most of the clock and depends heavily on the success of the running game. And finally, the boxers have to utilize their size advantage to physically wear down Dedham as the game enters its late stages. Now that all the facts have been presented about these two teams, it's time for a prediction. Dedham has never been in such an important game as today's Super Bowl. And no matter how loose they appear to be, they will be nervous when they step out onto this field. Brockton, on the other hand, has been here many times before. And most of this year's starting unit played in last year's Super Bowl victory over Woburn. Experience is a big plus in a Super Bowl game, and the boxers have a locker room full of it. Look for Brockton to establish their running game early on 
and then cruise on to their third straight Super Bowl victory. And now for all the action of today's Super Bowl matchup, let's go upstairs to Charlie Petty and Tim Cox. Thank you, Steve. Sullivan Stadium on a cool, breezy, but picturesque day here in Foxborough. And uh, Senor Petty, I guess they're playing for all the pasta today. All the pasta today, and really, as you said, Tim, this is ideal weather for football. There's a little breeze, but the sun is brilliant this afternoon. The field is as dry as a bone, and Brockton and Dedham will have op ample opportunity to show what they have to uh, show their wares this afternoon here at Foxborough. Well, it's a good day with the field conditions and the air conditions for running the ball, and this is something that two teams do well with the two leading scorers in Division One on the field today. That's right. You have Rudy Harris, who's leading Division One scoring, and his backup there or is a runner-up, I should say, is Dave Flynn from Dedham, who's a, a fireplug type runner, just the opposite of Rudy. Rudy being 6'2", 215, and, and Dave Flynn being about 5'8", 200 pounds. They're both strong running backs. However, uh, the big difference today will be that Rudy had, can be spelled or complemented to some degree by uh, Donnell, and uh, Donnell Campbell, that is. And, and Dave Flynn really doesn't have anyone. Sawyer is a good back, but he's certainly no Donnell Campbell. So the edge, as all of the prognosticators seem uh, to say, give the edge to Brockton this afternoon. Well, they have been called a one-dimensional team. That may not be a fair assessment. A team that goes 10-0 and on the season, regardless of their opponents or anything else, has to have a pretty good, solid program. Their defense is excellent. They've allowed only 55 points all year. Yeah, they do have an excellent defense. Uh, this has to be said, though, and, and again, just not saying anything critical of Dedham. However, uh, they are the champions of the Bay State League, where they did go undefeated, and the Bay State League has about four... I hate to say weak sisters in the league, and uh, they would have difficulty beating anybody even in Division Two or Three. Uh, whereas Brockton's had a couple of weak sisters, we know that the Suburban League has a couple there that they're not that strong. However, on the whole, the Brockton schedule has been much, much stronger than the Denham schedule. Well, I'll tell you something, Charlie. Along those same lines, uh, earlier this week I spoke with the gentleman who'll be doing the broadcasting for Denham, and uh, he said he informally polled about six of the Bay State League coaches since Thanksgiving Day, and all six said that they thought Natick was the better team in the Bay State League, and that only uh, perhaps a poor game plan on the part of Natick coach Tom Lamb against Denham uh, prevented them from being the undefeated team and the champion of the Bay State League. Well, that could be. Natick is a power. Natick has been a power for years. Of course, Brockton beat Natick here just two years ago, 22 to 20, I believe, uh, was a score of that, and everybody had been waiting for a long time because the Brockton-Natick matchup uh, had been, from one way or another, avoided, not intentionally, but by the, the quirk of the, uh, of the system. Uh, but Brockton did beat them 22 to 20. Natick is strong. They were 9-1 this year, I believe. Uh, they didn't qualify for the Super Bowl for the simple as Brockton had 9-1 because, again, back to the schedule, Brockton played those three out-of-state teams or powerhouses, and I believe all three of those teams collectively have lost two games beside the Brockton game. So that certainly added to Brockton's uh, point average uh, increasing very significantly, uh, Tim. It is a rather complex system that we've gone into before. Natick uh, finished out fourth in Division One behind Melrose. Melrose was 8-2, and two, however, so it depends on who you talk to as to who was the better team. This is Dedham's first trip to the Super Bowl, Brockton's ninth. Yeah, well, yeah, again, that's another edge that Brockton picks up. They've had, uh, starting with Coach Colombo and the rest of his coaching staff. Uh, they have been here as recently as last year, and again, as recently two years prior to that. Uh, they have been here and they have the feeling. Uh, Coach Lynch of Dedham, uh, a six foot seven inch giant, uh, has never been here before. He's only been a head coach for about four or five years, I believe. I don't know exactly how many years. Uh, he doesn't have the head coaching experience of a Coach Colombo who's been a head coach since 1960. So uh, again, the experience in the coaching level and the experience on the playing level favor Brockton to some degree. Well, those are the matchups today. Rudy Harris, Dave Flynn, the runners, the uh, both teams with the strong defenses. We'll go through uh, the lineups for you. Of course, uh, Steve Valley presented us with a good rundown of the lineups, introductions to all the players during our pregame program today. And hope you got a chance to catch that. But we'll run through the lineups again in a little bit. One thing, Steve, I just want to point out, not to be critical, but this is Brockton's. I think I was uh, listening to your program, your uh, pregame show. And uh, Brockton's going for their second straight Super Bowl, not their third. They won in 1985, did not win it in 86. That was the year they were defeated by St. John's of, uh, from Islip, New York, Long Island, I believe. And they went 9-1, and, and they started the winning streak to carry through 19... Uh, 
uh, 87 and through 88. So they had, whatever it is, they, this is their second straight Super Bowl, but they're sixth overall. And they're, they're fourth in the last five years, if you carry that back a little bit further. Last year here against Woburn, the previous year they were not here. Uh, the uh, Lexington was the year before Natick, that so that was 80, 84, and then uh, Natick in 85, Woburn in 87, and here against Denham this afternoon. Brockton will be wearing the white jerseys. I, I don't recall a Super Bowl where uh, the boxers were the visitors. Is that uh, handled, do you know, by the uh, ranking? Uh, no, there was. The Lexington game, Brockton was the visitors, Tim. Yes, they were on the other side of the field, as I recall, because they sat there. That's all I can <laughs> remember. We had the sun in the second half, which, which is always nice here at Sullivan Stadium. <laughs> uh, the second half, it gets pretty chilly where we are, so uh, we're, we're here in the well where we have a excellent uh, vantage point, but we don't have the comforts of a closed-in booth. Thanks to NBC and Nesson <laughs> and the rest of those people. Yeah, a quick explanation on that. Not that you care whether we're cold today, but uh, there's such a crowd here because of tomorrow's Patriots game against the Seahawks that uh, one booth is occupied and the radio demand is high for a day like this. Of course, with three games going on, there are radio stations uh, shuffling in and out all day long as well as cable TV and stations. Nesson paid $5,000 for their booth. Well, that helped. <laughs> <laughs> that had a little something to do with it. Okay, we're a couple of minutes away. Things delayed here. Uh, this afternoon in getting started. Now, I recall last year the Division II game ran a little long and, and it was hectic getting this game started by 1 o'clock today. That game was over and done with Drake uh, defeating Beverly uh, pretty easily. But there's a traffic pileup. Shows you the, the demand today. The crowd is filling in fast and they're still coming up Route 1. There's still a heavy traffic volume, as you can see. Uh, heading up Route 1 for this game, so they've held off the game about 15 minutes, and uh, I don't well, think that'll dampen the spirits of I mean, them. The, the people are still filing in. If you look across the way, you'll see people still coming in. The traffic is still backed up on Route 1. I would say that they'll have upwards of, uh, oh, close to 20,000, maybe even in, in, a, in excess of 20,000 people here this afternoon. It's Dedham, as you said earlier, Tim, this is their first trip to the Super Bowl, and the people out there have just gone gaga. And, uh, you know, you can understand why they would. Even in Brockton, being their ninth trip to the Super Bowl, people are very, very excited. And so you can understand Dedham's um, oh, enthusiasm and, uh, and the climactic feeling that, that they're enjoying at this time. And hopefully if when the game is over, they don't enjoy it as much as they do now. <laughs> there is a sense, Charlie, that, I, that I've noticed that uh, this game is perhaps more important to Brockton than maybe last year's Super Bowl, or maybe not the Natick game, but is it because of that uh, loss to Lemonster and the being knocked out of the national rankings? Is, does Brockton have more to prove today than they normally would have? Well, yeah, uh, I think what you say is, has, has a lot of merit, Tim. Brockton did lose that game to Lemonster. In my opinion, that was a fluke. That would not happen again. It just There were a lot of things that contributed to the Brockton loss that night. Uh, I think the fact that it was a night game was, was, a, was a factor. I believe the fact that it was... Um, played on a Friday. Well, you know, Brockton is used to playing on Saturdays. I believe that that was a factor. Uh, the fact that the Brockton High School band uh, under Vinnie Macrina was not there, that, that, that support, that, that gives the boys that feeling. Uh, the crowd was a very intimidating crowd that night at Lemister. There were factors beyond the game of football that influenced the result. Uh, I'm not making alibis for Brockton, and I'm not saying that the Lemister wasn't a good football team. They were and are. They're undefeated. They're playing in the Central Mass Super Bowl themselves today. However, uh, the, the situation with Brockton here is they want to prove that they're playing another undefeated team, as Lemister was at the time, and they can beat an undefeated team. Uh, they, I don't know what could happen here to cause Brockton to lose this game, but with high school boys, 15, 16, 17, and maybe there's a couple here, 18 years old, anything can happen. But on the surface of this, of course, the people who are going to be seeing this after the game is over is going to be after the fact, and I could be <laughs> embarrassed by, by uh, some of the comments I make. But uh, barring a serious injury or uh, just uh, uh, a, a situation where Brockton makes a series of mistakes, uh, it would be difficult, in my opinion, how they would lose this football game as long as they play their regular game. As long as they play their regular game, they're capable of beating any high school team in the country, including Lemonster if they played them again. Well, Dedham comes into it in the unique situation of being, as they see it, an underrated number one team, meaning they've been number one in the rankings through most of the season, at least since that loss for Brockton. Uh, and that's because of the points and the way it works out. They've been the number one ranked team and come into today's game number one, and they come onto the field now in their maroon uniforms. And yet they feel as if they've been underrated because they haven't gotten the attention or the press that Brockton has. Well, the Boston Globe yesterday when they're picking the winners, they picked Brockton to win this football game 28 to 7. And as you said, Brockton's ranked second Eastern Mass because of the point structure. Uh, there isn't anybody here. Uh, I was just talking to Jack Bicknell. Jack Bicknell happened to be the coach of Boston College, and a lot of people recognize that name. And Jack Bicknell is here for one reason. And, and I, he's here to watch some of the players in the Brockton team, whether it be Mike Thorson, Jay McGillis, 
uh, Steve Marciano, uh, Rudy, or Donnell, uh, whoever it could be. He's here to watch that Brockton game because of the tremendous amount of publicity that Brockton has created as a result of the USA Today number one ranking for six consecutive weeks. And again, they're back in the top 20 again, uh, Jim. You probably saw it in last week's ranking. Brockton, although they lost that football game to Lemonster, uh, they're, they're back in number 20, I believe. And it's amazing what Brockton can do for somebody. Brockton played Lemonster. Nobody ever heard of Lemonster, except the people in Lemonster, maybe Worcester County. But now they beat Brockton, they're ranked nationally. Number 13, I believe. It does happen that way, and uh, Lemonster was put thrust into the spotlight by that uh, win over Brockton. As the boxers get set to make their way, you hear the crowd, and here they come, led by Rudy Harris. The Brockton boxers set to take on the Denim Marauders in Division I Eastern Mass football. This game, of course, sponsored by the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. They make possible the coverage of the game. Throughout the day, we'll be telling you about some of the contributions that the MIAA makes to high school athletics here in Massachusetts. A well-rounded education, of course, is one that is not only academically oriented, but one that also includes physical, social, and emotional development. Interscholastic athletics provide for the other half of education. The MIAA encourages you to support your local high school athletic teams throughout the school year. Charlie. I was just going to say, Charlie, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, one thing that's got to be uh, a factor today, and we'll discuss it throughout, is the size difference. There isn't a player on this Denim team over 200 pounds. How is that going to affect Denim? Are they going to get worn down faster? Uh, Brockton High School has a larger team physically than Dedham. They have a larger team in numbers, too. But also, in addition to the physical situation where Brockton has an advantage, Dedham has more two-way players, including Dave Flynn. Dave Flynn is a linebacker. Now, they say that when the, the going gets rough for the defense and the team has an offense going on the ground, uh, Coach Lynch will put Dave Flynn in as a linebacker. Well, that's very good. I'm sure Dave Flynn is a very effective tackler and a strong defensive player. However, that has to minimize to some extent to some extent, his uh, power or his strength is an offensive player, especially late in the game in the third and fourth periods. So uh, Brockton, again, as you mentioned, uh, has an edge in size. Brockton has an edge in, uh, they have fewer two-way players. Uh, there are several factors here uh, that were mentioned already that would indicate that the prediction by the Boston Globe would be uh, uh, a reasonably accurate one. We'll see as the game progresses, though. And we're set for the toss of the coin at the center of the field. You see the Brockton captains, Chris Murphy, Jay McGillis, Darnell Campbell. Uh, we have Michael Lewis out there, Mike Thorson, and Rudy Harris at the center of the field. And for Dedham, just Dave Flynn, who's pretty much Mr. Everything for the Marauders of Dedham. They uh, count on him not only for the running and for the defense, as Charlie was talking about, but also for their kicking. Dave Flynn is a pretty good kicker. He's, a very good, he's just a good football player. He's an all-round football player. He's a throwback to the old days. Yeah, a fellow does more than one thing, run, tackle, block, kick, probably catches passes for all I know, although that has not been his strong suit at this point. Uh, incidentally, I think I will mention the officials for today's football game. Uh, we'll have five officials on the field and one up in the booth as a clock operator. Uh, Stanley Livingstone will be the referee today. Gene Smith will be the umpire. Ken Sargent is the head linesman. Jerry Ciccarelli is the field judge. Clyde McCarthy is the back judge, and up in the press box, operating the clock, will be John Anderson. All right, this game is uh, a big one from a press point of view once again. And Nesson, the New England Sports Network, is uh, here covering this one today. As Charlie mentioned, the fee that they paid, they're going to be running it tonight, and there is a uh, MIAA regulation against running a game within 20 hours after its conclusion, but Nesson uh, paid the extra fee to be able to do that, run it on this Saturday evening, and uh, maybe I'll get a chance to see that one as well. Well, we have both bands here, Tim. The Brockton High Band is uh, situated on, their, on our side of the field, and the uh, Dedham Band is on the field, apparently getting ready to play the national anthem. They are ready to do that. And the official's still discussing something at the center of the field, but I assume we're getting set now to play the national anthem with the Denham High School marching band. Now we're waiting 
Something is holding up something. All the hats are off. Sarah Looks Lawrence like we're ready. Field. Everybody's ready for the national anthem, but for some reason they're not Ladies playing. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to please rise. All right, now we're set for the national anthem. The, the big crowd getting up on their feet. Those that have made it into the stadium so far for the national anthem. is pumped up for that night. Oh, I suppose it's part of the enthusiasm, but uh, a little lack of decorum there with some of the Denim players started taunting Brockton in the middle of the national anthem. <laughs> well, I guess Brockton's a bit early. to receive, but Tim, the kickoff, they, looks like the, the kickoff receiving team is lining up. Rudy will be deep, along with Steve Marciano, plus in the middle will be Tony Comer. And we'll uh, run down the lineups for you as the teams come out onto the field after this opening kickoff. The boxers will be to our left oh, no, in the white jerseys I'm with sorry. the maroon or red I think the referee pants. is going to the wrong side of the field. Stanley Livingston, you're on the wrong end of the field. Do you know that? I don't think he knows that. The guy in the white hat is Sammy Livingston. He's a referee. He's with the kicking team, but normally the referee is with the receiving team, unless there's been a change in technique that <laughs> we have not been made aware of. I, uh, New rule. I, I, I don't know what has happened. This, this is very confusing to me, frankly. I don't want to. Yeah, but there's Rudy Harris at the end zone with yeah, the big I Patriots. What is? Going on? And uh, the referee Livingstone now is discussing something with Dave Flynn, the uh, kicker for the Denham Marauders. Denham in the maroon. I, what is he trying to do down there? I mean, this is this is confusing at best. We'll be kicking for Denham. Eleven minute quarters today at Sullivan Stadium. Rudy Hold on. There's something wrong here. I'm sorry, Tim. There's something that's not correct. He's still talking to members of the kicking team and now to the kicker, Dave Flynn. Well, whatever it is, we're about to get this game underway. The Denim crowd is very much pumped up. They're in their first ever Super Bowl, and they're about to kick off to the Brockton Boxers making their ninth Super Bowl appearance in the 17-year history, and this one is underway. What is that? An onside kick, and it may be recovered by Denim. I don't know who recovered. The yes, it is. It's Denim's signaled by one of the officials that Denim recovered the onside kick at the 42-yard line of Brockton. The uh, kick, of course, has to go 10 yards and then the uh, kicking team can recover it, and that's exactly what happened. A little squib kick by Flynn off to the left sideline here. I couldn't tell Tim if that was an intentional squib kick or if he just missed it. Whatever. They weren't uh, the lined up line, in any kind of an onside kick formation. It was a standard formation, but uh, somebody was fooled. And as a result, Dedham gets the ball despite having kicked off. They'll start with Mike Evans at the quarterback position. 
and Flynn in the backfield. We'll get the lineups for the offense and the Brockton defense after this play. First and 10 for Denham on Brockton's 42. Man in motion is Sawyer. And he'll dump the screen pass out. Evans pass intended for the tight end. Coming out of the line is Steve Poles, and uh, the pass is at his feet. Let's check the lineups for you. The Dedham offensive lineup will look like this. Buster Smolek and Steve Poles, your two tight ends. Cosimo Cucinata, friend of yours, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> and Paul Caffrey, the tackles. Dino Rizzi and Paul Lepsevich at the guards, and the center is Mike Marr. In the backfield, you'll see Franco Musto as your wingback. Derek Sawoyer, quick player, probably the quickest on the Dedham team, is a tailback. Dave Flynn, the big fullback, uh, and Mike Evans is your quarterback. Right, we're back with the live action here with the second and 10 on Brockton's 42 yard line, a 43 yard line, I guess, Tim. And Evans taking a long time at the line of scrimmage. The give us to Sawoyer. He's hit in the backfield and knocked down, tripped up by Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy, as he's done so many times throughout his career here at Brockton High School, stopped the man for about a one yard loss. It'll be third down in about 12, I would say, on the Brockton 44 yard line. All right, let's see that defensive lineup with Chris Murphy and the rest of that uh, strong defensive line. It looked like this. Rudy Harris will do some playing at left defensive end, though Eric Drukas is in there now, and Chris Campbell is your other defensive end. Lewis, Lewis, and uh, Grind will take turns with Chris Murphy in there on the defensive line. We'll get the rest of the defense after this play. Third and 11 to go is what it says on the scoreboard. Evans back to pass, got some time, and it's going to be picked off. Right into the hands of Jay McGillis, Jay and he's McGillis. brought down at the 28-yard line. Ubiquitous Jay McGillis, he's everywhere. He's here, he's there. He passes, he intercepts passes, he makes tackles. He runs back, kickoffs a touchdown. Brockton now has possession. Jay McGillis with his fifth interception of the year. He leads the boxers in that department. And he'll get the ball back after Brockton loses it on the opening kickoff. So let's check the Brockton offense with the heralded backfield of Harrison Campbell. And here it is, Leon Stefferson, the tight end, Murphy, Kelleher, Thorson, Gina Coolis, and Lewis, that superb offensive line. It will be Darnell Campbell Thank right away up to the 30-yard line, gain of about two on the play. Making the stop was number 60. The rest of the offense Mark looks like this. Zarinskis, the quarterback, Harrison Campbell doing the running. In the backfield, Steve Marciano and Tony DeGrace are your receivers. For Dedham on the offensive side of the ball, they'll have a lot of two-way players. As uh, Charlie mentioned, Mike Marr will be on the other side, and uh, Lepsevich, and we'll check that for you following this play. 9.42 on the first quarter clock. Tim Cox and Charlie Petty from Sullivan Stadium. Division I Eastern Mass Super Bowl, Brockton against Dedham. Zarinskis the give. On the reverse, it's DeGrace trying to break away from Flynn. He does, and he's got lots of room. First down yardage, and then some. He'll be pushed out of bounds at midfield. And Tony DeGrace showing some speed to get around Dave Flynn on that sideline. That's something we haven't really seen too much of this year. First down as we're talking to DeGrace, picking it up. One of the uh, Dedham defenders, if we see this on the replay, I don't know if we will or not, Jim, had a clear shot of Tony, but his strong legs pulled him away from there. He picked up the first down. Brock is still, the ball is still in Brock territory. Their own 48-yard line, first down. Again, fine run by Tony DeGrace. It was Dave Flynn who was trying to make the tackle. We know he can run. <laughs> it was just a matter of speed versus speed, and Tony's one out this time. First down from the 48-yard line of Brockton. And this time it's Rudy Harris for the first time, pushing ahead across midfield down to about the 49-yard line, gain of three on the play. And let's take a look at Tony DeGrace. Tackle made by Dave Flynn, number 44. Here's the backfield, and Tony picks up the handoff after the fake to Harris, and there it is, just breaks away from Flynn, maintains his balance, and then off to the races before being pushed out of bounds at about midfield. That's an exact situation that could wear down the Dedham offense late in the football game. Dave Flynn made a good charge in there. He shot in from, he shot the gap, a blitz from his linebacking position, almost made a, a good tackle for a loss, but this has to show up later on as far as his overall efficiency is concerned. Again, the fake to Harris. This time it's Darnell Campbell oh, trying to break away. There's a flag down. I think we're going to have an illegal block on Brighton. Darnell's got the first down yardage, but right? this one may be coming back. Franco Busto, number 23 for Dedham, was just about to make the hit on Darnell when he was hit from behind. It is a clip. So that play will come back. Going to be assessed against the offense. Brockton is going to be charged with clipping. While we're doing that, let's see if we can set up the uh, Dedham defense for you. 
it's not a big team, as we've told you, and uh, they'll go with this defensive line. Bill Cunahan, the biggest of the linemen at nose guard, and he runs just about 200 pounds. The rest of the team a little bit smaller with O'Connor, Marr, Lepsevich, and Poles, who plays on the other side of the line as well. In the backfield, there's that three linebacker setup now. What you see here is a 12-man team. They will be using that. They'll shuttle some people in and out. Flint, Scahill, Pellegrini will be your linebackers. The strong safety, Bill Kallenberg, Sawoyer, who goes both ways as a running back and defensive back as well. And uh, the cornerbacks, Franco Musto and Bill Luciano. Well, this is the first passing situation this box has been presented with. They have second and about 15, uh, back in their own territory now in about the 42-yard line. Let's see what Coach Colombo sent in to Bob Zerinskis. Damaging penalty on that last run by Darnell Campbell. They'll give to Darnell again, and they'll be stopped quickly. No gain on the play, maybe even a lost yard. Mike Barr, the nose guard, or rather the defensive tackle on the left side, was there to make the hit. So it'll be third and long for the boxers. We have a lot of coaches here. Val Moscato is here from Oliver Ames. One of the many, many the high school coaches a lot of people in the area. A lot of people interested in seeing this Brockton team if they haven't had a chance to yet this season. It'll be Zerinskis on the option. He'll keep it, and he'll almost be brought down. Now he tries to dump it off in the direction of Rudy Harris, and Rudy will get it, and he'll be run back to the 29-yard line. Well, that was a by the Adam Pinkman team. That happened very, very south of Brockton. Now with a fourth down and about 25 yards. Definitely a punting situation for their own 31. Boxers fortunate to be able to hold on to the ball in that situation. It looked like Bob Zerinskis might be stripped of it at this point with uh, Joe O'Connor, the defensive end on him, gives it off to Rudy, but Rudy had nowhere to go and was uh, hit quickly by Bill Kallenberg, the strong safety. So that brings up a fourth and 21, I believe. But regardless, it's a punting situation. Rudy Harris back to kick and Derek Sawyer standing at his own 36 and Rudy will lose the snap he's in trouble and he'll be down tries to get rid of it does and a flag down as Chris Campbell jumps on it at the two-yard line oh my things are happening here in the early minutes of the first quarter a flag went down that's about the only hope for Brockton at this point if the penalty may have gone against Denham for a face mask or something along those lines and Rudy Harris is getting his two cents worth and I don't know whether he was pulled I down it could be a foul against Brockton because Rudy was with the boy around he was the only one and he tried to dump the ball off to Chris Campbell at about the same time that the flag flew and I see Arvin Colombo pointing to the sidelines pointing up the field actually intentional grounding, intentional grounding is the call oh, intentional gr second yes. ball is pass or intentional grounding I don't know Nice of the yeah, I guess that was. Well, so has 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 and that'll just give the ball to Denham. Deep, 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 deep across the territory. And here's the play. Here's as Rudy gets hit and tries to get rid of it. Now, Chris Campbell was in the immediate area, and he ended up with the ball. But I guess the ruling was Rudy was pretty much down and was just trying to get rid of it. Well, so Denham in excellent position to get some points on the board here in the early going. But Rob's let them know they want to see some. Well, the first big break of the game, well, actually, uh, Denham has had two breaks. The onside kick, if that was an onside kick, recovered by them. And now these uh, fumble snap from center on the punt formation. And then the intentional grounding. And uh, Denham has a first and goal on about the Brockton three-yard line. You can count that. Flipping penalty is a, a break for Denham as well. Darnell Campbell rushing for first down yardage and having it called back. That's what pushed them back into their own half of the field to begin with. And now they've got the ball at the three yard line of Brockton with four shots at the end zone. And they've got that powerful fullback, number 44, Dave Flint, who I'm sure will get the ball at least three out of the four tries. He has yet to carry the ball because on uh, third down after a run by Sawyer and a futile attempt to pass the ball. Evans was intercepted by Jay McGillis to set up the Brockton drive. But now here we go, first and goal from the three. 6.30 to go in the first quarter. Dedham knocking at the door. It's Flynn. He's stonewalled at the line of scrimmage and pushes his way ahead back towards the one-yard line. Picked up Looked as if he'd get nowhere, but he managed to get something out of it. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he's a strong runner, has those strong tree trunk legs. 
and brought him down at least to the two, maybe to the one. I'd say he's on the one yard line. Just Second and goal for Dedham on Brockton's one yard line. We haven't seen uh, the opposition scoring first on Procton too many times this year. We saw it last week against Waltham, but that was something of a fluke in itself. This is uh, the result of a strong defensive effort by the Marauders. Here's Flynn again, diving. He won't make it. He'll come up short on this one. It'll be third and goal. I think he's inside the one on this one. He dove just over the one yard line. Didn't make the, field, the end zone as we can see. Yeah. That's on about the half, one foot line. Third and goal on about the one foot line of Brockton. There's a plane flying over the stadium today. A lot of people renting uh, airplanes to carry messages. And this one we see flying by. It says Rocky and Marvin and BHS, the city of champions. And the champion defense trying to get motivated here to stop this Dedham drive. It's Evans on the keeper he and he'll get in. It looks like he made it, yes. The quarterback on the quarterback sneak. He has kept the ball. It'll be six to nothing Dedham with not 515 remaining in the first period here at Sullivan Stadium. And perhaps more damaging, Charlie, than that six points is the limp that we see on Chris Murphy. Chris was into the backfield trying to get some penetration and he was slow getting up. He's now limping around the end zone. We know big number 74 has been hurt a couple of times this year and we're uh, hoping that this isn't going to be an injury that'll take him out of this very important Maybe game. Something is stinging him right now. We'll find out as the game progresses. Dave, Dave Flynn lining up for the extra point. He kicked 30 extra points this year. As we said, he's an all round player. And he'll put this one up and through. Seven to nothing Dedham with 5.15 to go in the first quarter. It certainly has been an active game so far. A very active game, and as we said, uh, three big breaks have occurred, all in favor of Dedham. Brockton's gonna have to uh, put their thinking caps back on and not make any more mistakes. Now let's see if Dedham tries an onside kick again on this kickoff. Well, it's you know, something you wouldn't want to try too often against Brockton. You don't want to give them that good field position. Well, I'll the tell you, but, surprise helps but if, out. if they kick deep, they, they've got Rudy Harris, Steve Marciano, and Tony Comer, all three of whom. As we see the touchdown by Mike Evans. All three of them are capable of going the distance. And so it, not to kick deep but, and give the ball to Brockton on the 30, 35 yard line is not a bad idea. But uh, that other one backfired on Brockton. Again, I still don't know if that was an onside, an intentional onside kick or an accidental onside kick. Well, Chris Murphy down on the Brockton sideline, uh, talking things over with the trainer and taking a slow walk to see how the knee, ankle, whatever it is that uh, he injured on that play feels. And he certainly would be a big loss. He's jogging on it now, trying to get some feeling back. Well, last to, uh, the, on Thanksgiving Day, Brockton fell behind 7 to nothing at Waltham and came back, as we know, to Rout Waltham, 58 to 13. And let's see what happens at this point of the game when. Uh, Dedham is lining up again, and they say uh, their all-round player, Dave Flynn, is lining up with the ball on the far, uh, far hash mark on the 40, naturally. They kick off in, from the 40-yard line in high school football. Now, they're using the the Patriots goalpost here today, Charlie. Is there a difference between high school and the big uh, uh, the Not big to leagues? my knowledge. I don't know if there is. It's, uh, I don't think there's any difference. It's the same distance. All right, Flynn to kick off, and he keeps it low, and it hits Mike Thorson, and the Marauders will get the ball back. Wow. Well, another break in favor of Dedham. They have the ball in their own territory in about the 48-yard line with a first down and another onside kick, successful onside kick, I should say. Well, I'll tell you something. At this point, we look back to the pregame analysis by our own Steve Valley, who mentioned one of the keys to the game for Dedham is to keep their defense off the field. Well, here we are with 5.13 to go in the first quarter, and their defense has hardly been out there at all. When they have, they've done the job, and now the offense gets it back thanks to another break for the special teams. Well, let's watch the Brockton defense go to work. They have their work cut off for them now. They've got to stop Wal uh, Dedham on this series. First and 10 from the 48, their own 48. Going in motion is Flynn. And Evans wants to go short. And he does, and it's caught. How he caught that ball, I don't know. That is Steve Poles, the tight end. Same play they used to start their first drive, and it went nowhere. But this one he managed to catch before being popped by Jay McGillis, and it's first down. On the Brockton 40-yard line, it's a first and 10 for Denham. We saw Flynn in motion to the right. Obviously, it was going to be a passing play with him out of the backfield. They very seldom run with him in motion. Poles took a hit on that, and he's gone to the sidelines to shake that one off. He's 5'10", 185. Not a... Not a big guy by the Andrews standards. And, uh, when you get hit rattled. by Jay McGillis, you get hit by Jay McGillis. First and 10 from the Brockton 40. Dedham on the board, seven to nothing, and on a roll. The 
This is Flynn, up the middle, got some yardage. Pushing ahead to the 32 yard line, gain of eight. Well, Dedham is showing that their undefeated season was no fluke up to this point. They have a second down and about two yards for first down and they're on the Brockton territory, I would say in the 32, just short of the 32 yard line. That's the first real shot we've had of Dave Flynn and his running ability. And if he can keep that up against the Brockton defensive line, the Marauders will make things happen all day today. Well, he's a strong runner, and his strong suit is the first half. Well, he, he bounces off Evans this time uh, as the give goes to Sawyer, and he'll get close to first down yardage. Very close. I think they're going to spot it just short. It'll be a third down in less than a yard from where the official is spotting the ball. Yes. Well, they're going to measure it, but I don't believe they made it. I think they have to get up to the 30-yard line for a first down. Yeah, although the marker on the far side of the field is going to make it close by the looks of things. We'll check the measurement and well, see we'll where they stand. Very close to the 30-yard line, 3.59 left in the first quarter. And we're shot by the length of the football, I believe. Let's watch it pretty closely. There right, we are, shot by the length of the football. That, that referee's eye of Charlie Petty. So third, very short, and a real test for the boxers here to try to stiffen. Odds are that Dave Flynn will get the ball. Well, I, I, I know that if I were Coach Lynch, I'd be giving the ball to Dave Flynn, and I think the, the entire Brockton defense will be looking for number 44. The big defensive line set up in there, Grind, Murphy, the Lewises, Eric Drukas and Chris Campbell across the way. And it'll be Evans again. He'll have the first down and without much difficulty. They fooled me and they fooled everybody because he picked up about three yards in that. So it's another first down for Dedham. They're getting deeper into Brockton territory. And they're about the Brockton 27 yard line with a first down. Scores seven to nothing Dedham. And Brockton defense is gonna to have to really get to work on this, on this next three or four downs. Charlie, the only times I can recall the boxers falling behind first this season were against Rome, which was a seesaw battle all the way against Lemonster where they never recovered. Against and Severian against too. Waltham. Severian as well, that's right. So it has happened a few times, but uh, only against Lemonster did it turn out to be fatal. Flynn trying to break away, can't get away. Jay McGillis, you don't go through Jay McGillis or by Jay McGillis. He is such a devastating tackler, such a sure-fisted tackler. Uh, I've never seen a boy get away from him as long as he has a shot at him. He's never been hippy-dipped out of the way. Uh, let's watch this. Flynn got a couple of good blocks in front of him. But he still picked up five yards, approximately five yards. Well, let's call it second and about oh, a long five. Good block Four there down. for Musto before McGillis was able to get at Dave Flynn and stop him after a gain of four, they'll call it. So a second down and six for the Marauders from the 24 of Brockton. And Flynn again right up the middle. He'll get down across the 20, a couple of yards short of the first down. Joe DeMore in on the tackle. Third down situation with about three yards to go for a first down, I believe. The ball is resting just inside the 20, Brockton's 20 yard line. These next two downs are very key plays for Brockton in particular. You're right about that, Charlie. You don't want to see that momentum get away from you too early in the game with this fired up Denham crowd. Third down and two. Flynn, he's got the first down. The first down. Down and brought on the 15, Brockton's 15 yard line. That'll be another first down for Dedham. And right now, they're doing what Brockton usually does. Oh, that's about the 17 yard line. Did he make it? Well, it's very close. Uh, they're going to. They're going to measure. This is a real close. Generous. I would say it's. Boy, it's very close. Very difficult to tell from up here whether he's made it or not. It'll be fourth and very short if he didn't make it. And you would assume that they'd go for it at this well, point in the ball game. He didn't make it by much. If he did, he didn't lose it by much if he did. I guess he made First it. Down. First down. Well, the Brockton defense really, as we keep repeating, has to come alive and has to do what they've done so many times this year. They have to stop Denham on this drive. It's very important. We have a first and 10 on Brockton's 17 yard line, score seven to nothing, Dedham. 
140 to go, first quarter. Evans back to pass, going to the corner, looking for poles, and he's got him. Touchdown. Well, Boyd, Dedham is showing a lot of class, a lot of ability, mixing up their plays. They're not really known for their passing game. Excellent play calling by Coach Bob Lynch to uh, bring in Steve Poles, who caught five touchdown passes from the tight end position this year. They can throw the ball. Sawyer's caught eight touchdown passes, and Evans throws his 11th of the year, and it's a big one, putting the Marauders on top, 13 to nothing with Flynn on to kick the extra point. Well, I think this is the biggest deficit the Brockton's faced thus far, with the exception of the, uh, the Lemonster game, and it looks with a short kicker like Dave Flynn, it looks like it could be 14 to nothing. Oh. It may not be. Flynn gets the ball as he's wrapped up by Steve well, Marciano. The ball got away from Flynn, from the holder, actually, and it'll remain 13 to nothing. So there's a break for the boxers. Well, now we're going to see if they try that onside kick again. They've kicked off three times with a minute and 31 seconds remaining in the first period. Denham will be kicking off for the third time in the ball game. Once on the opening kickoff, where they recover the onside kick, and then they kicked off after the first touchdown. Oh, here we have the... The second touchdown going to the corner for Poles, who's made two excellent catches on this drive. He caught that ball around midfield and was popped by Jay McGillis, went to the sidelines to nurse the wounds, comes back in and makes this big catch for the touchdown to put the Marauders on top by 13. And Charlie mentioned the big deficit uh, so far. Leminster's biggest lead was 15 to nothing, and then, of course, the final score was a 15-point deficit, 27 to 12. But uh, the boxers are not accustomed to being in this situation, and uh, one can only hope, boxer fans can only hope at this point that they remain calm, stick with the game plan. Well, it's a character situation. Rattled. It's a character situation when you're down. They've been come back before many times this year and in the past years. Brockton's been able to come off the deck and start scoring when they had to. But now we have the ball again, teed up on the far hash mark, on the 40-yard line naturally. And let's see what uh, kicking specialist Dave Flynn does with this. If they try another onside kick, well, they have Rudy. Rudy Harris is up with the front five in case it is another onside kick. So Coach Columbo, and I see Donnell Campbell here and Tony DeGrace all up front. They're putting some of the some of the good hands across the, the front line. Actually, Leon Rudy's Stephenson is up there. All Rudy of the ball handling. back deep, and it'll go short again. And it'll be caught, but I don't think that well, 10 no, yards. No, yes, it no, did no, to go 10 no, yards. You can't, that's the... They can't interfere with the opportunity to catch. That's right. Brockton never got a chance to catch the ball. And think, in fact, Tony DeGrace was I don't hammered. Think that there's no flag on the play. The I don't see a flag on the play. I, I think oh, somebody got hurt. Here comes the official. It's Tony DeGrace who was down on the field. He was just about to try to catch that ball when he was leveled by the gentleman who did catch it or somebody around him. They, that's, I believe that's treated just like a punt, Jim. They have to give the, 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 the receiving team an opportunity to catch the ball. But there's no flag on the play. I don't understand. The situation. The officials are going to discuss the call now as Tony DeGrace has helped off the field. But they have brought the ball back up near midfield. They have not uh, brought it back to where the player was tackled, so we'll just have to wait and see. This is, uh, to use a baseball analogy, it's as if the boxers have been fooled by the bad curveball. It's a first down. What? I, I, well, I, I don't understand it, but I guess. That's the way it's a third kickoff in a row that ended uh, by Dedham that ended up with a first down for Dedham. Armin Colombo is out near the numbers. He's so far out onto the field, and Mike Lewis, you see, is is furious. I, I, I don't know what referee Stanley Livingstone is thinking, and maybe I, I've forgotten the rules, but I was under my impression that a that a kick had to you had to allow the catch the receiving team to catch a kick, whether it's a punt or a kickoff. Again, I'm I'm at a loss at this point. I haven't picked up a rule book for a while, but I don't think they've made much change in that. Well, Dedham has the ball again in Brockton territory on the Brockton 44-yard line. It was Joe O'Connor, normally a defensive end, who recovered that kick and ran it to the 45-yard line of Brockton. 44, actually. A reverse here. That'll get nowhere fast as Sawyer is able to turn it into a two-yard gain just about. He was hit in the backfield by Jay McGillis Jay and Jay up. Bercy. Sawyer, we should mention here, Tim, is their quickest runner. He is, has exceptional speed. So we do have a second down. Let's call it nine yards for Dedham in Brockton territory, close to the 44, 43-yard line. Well, as I was about to say, it's, it's yes. as if the, the Brockton team were, were getting fooled badly by, the, by a big 
hooking curveball, and you know that pitch is coming every time you get up after that. It's the same thing. Now they're in, they've been intimidated by this onside kick business, and it's worked for Dedham three times. I don't think you'll ever see that again. Well, it's a pass Evans situation. looking to pass. He's dropped way he's back. Caught. He's, he's under big pressure. Going to get rid of it, and he's got poles open, and he'll get the first down. Oh, flag, flag down on the play, play after the tackle. Let's see what the flag is for by the headline. Another flag, another flag. Three flags have flown. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. The last two, on the, field? the last two coming just after the play had died. I think an ineligible man downfield for Denham is one of the calls. That could be it. I believe I did see a 70 downfield. I, I don't see if we see it on the repeat on the replay. We're going to see the replay here and see if we can figure out what it is that's going on as we await the officials' calls. Evans going out a deep drop back about 15 yards before he gets rid of the ball. And there's the catch. And there's the first flag just coming out of I the official's pocket. Number, number 23 clipped one of the Brockton defenders, I believe. But we're trying to. That would be fair play. He was clipped earlier on the uh, when Brockton had the ball. This uh, has all the appearances of a, of a big game between two inexperienced teams. Yes, Nerves right. are showing, a lot of uh, penalties, a lot of strange plays. Of course, we have to remember, Tim, that whoever plays Brockton plays their best game of the season. It's, it's unquestionable. Just the idea that you're playing Brockton motivates you in itself. But this was against a penalty against Dedham. It is an ineligible receiver downfield. There are no other signals. There were other flags thrown, but appa apparently only that penalty will be called. It'll be a five-yard penalty from the original line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up a uh, first down and a second down in about 15. Well, now that's a first penalty against Dedham, and this is, uh, they're in a passing situation. Let's see what they do. My mistake, actually, Charles, but uh, it is about 15 yards for the first down. They have to get to the 34-yard line of Brockton. Sawyer goes in motion, and Flynn, the lone setback. Passing situation for Evans. Got some time, and he'll get it up. It'll be deflected and incomplete. incomplete. Intended for Musto, and Poles was there. I thought 80, Steve Poles was going to come down with another miracle catch. Well, right? they did that. That happened in the Leminster game. It certainly did. Deflected pass, ended up a touchdown. What do we, well, that we is the end of the first quarter. And Coach Colombo racing out to the middle of the field to talk about I'm sure that last kickoff. You know, it doesn't make sense. I, you know, at halftime, I know there's at least a dozen football officials up in the booth in back of us. I have to discuss this with them. Yeah, we'll have to find because, out about uh, that. the referee, Stanley Livingstone, I'm sure he's a competent guy. At least I thought he was a competent guy. Uh, I, I just don't know. I know the commission of officials for Southeastern Massachusetts High School is here. I saw him before the kickoff, Tim, and we're going to have to discuss this with him. It doesn't make sense to me that a player not be allowed to catch a kickoff. And Tony DeGrace really could have been hurt on that play. He's still sitting on the bench. He's well, still he was hurt, actually. Kind of rattled up. I mean, he really could have been seriously injured because he was there blindsided, looking up to catch the ball. Before you, it's it's as if a receiver is interfered with on a on a pass play. That's illegal. Why shouldn't it be illegal on a kickoff? You no, know, it, it, it's it's a mystery to me. I'll I'll have to see. But we at, at halftime when the bands we'll are doing out. their thing, uh, I intend to go inside and find out what the rule is on that. We will check that out for you and let you know. We are at the end of the first quarter. Dedham on top by a score of 13 to nothing. If you, if you joined us late, if you weren't aware of the way things developed here on uh, Saturday afternoon, it's been a strange first quarter. The Marauders started off kicking the ball and on an onside kick, managed to recover it. That drive was stalled by a Jay McGillis interception, but that Brockton drive we have a was pushed back to the two-yard line. 15. And Dedham was in to score on a one-yard play after that. And uh, on the second onside kick that they recovered, we were able to turn that into a touchdown as well. Flynn on the carry, trying to get the big yardage. He'll be stopped after a gain of about six. Back beyond the original line of scrimmage, Bill McCoy in on the tackle. Let's call it fourth at about nine for Dedham on Brockton's 42, 43-yard line. And this is a big play for Denham here, and a big play for Brockton. If Brockton well, can stall them, certainly will pick up their spirits tremendously. It's the punting situation now for the Marauders, and Flint goes back to do the kicking, so the boxers will get the ball back, barring a strange development. And a short, high kick 
Not a good by check. Not Flynn, a good check. And it'll just take a short down of bounce and then bounce backwards. The boxers will get it about their own 27 yard line. Well, the line of scrimmage was a 39, uh, 44 yard line. It goes down to the 20, oh, the 27 yard line. It's about a 17 yard kick. Brockton now is going to have to show what they have. Show what they're made of. They're down 13 to nothing here. The per second period, 10 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. And they're going to have to get their scoring shoes and their thinking hats back on. Well, I think it's also. It goes without saying at this point, Charlie, that the boxers cannot panic. They are down 13. It's not something they're accustomed to, but it's also very early in this ball game. They don't have to drop out of their game plan. Just stick with what you know and what you do so well, and get some points on the board. You'll get back into this ball game. It will be the fake on the reverse, and Zarinsk is going long for Marciano. Just too long. Oh. Good pass play, good play selection. Marciano's well covered. Pass was just beyond his fingertips. It would have been an outstanding catch had he been able to make it. Well, we have a second and 10 for Brockton. Again, they're on their 28-yard line. So Rinske to Marciano. Now, I tell you, this isn't uh, this isn't panicking by any means, but it certainly isn't indicative of, of a conservative game plan. It doesn't look like a team that's down 13-0 to pull a play like that. First and first and deep, or fairly deep in their own territory. I think they're going to go back to the Rudy Donnell duo. I, I don't really know what is uh, going to happen naturally. We're all guessing. But a second and 10 for Brockton. The race wide to the bottom of your screen. Marciano wide to the top. And it is Rudy Harris pushing ahead for about three and being taunted as he hits the ground at around the 30 yard line. Well, we have a second and let's say, uh, let's call it seven, Tim, for Brockton. Third and about seven, that is. Well, this is a big play for Brockton. They'll have to punt deep in their own territory if they don't make the first down on this play. I don't know what Coach Colombo is going to throw, call a pass play or what? It's the only punt the boxers have had thus far was disastrous. The snap got away from Rudy Harris, and he was chased back to his two-yard line where he dumped it off, was called for a, a grounding, potential grounding, and... Dedham turned it into six points, seven points. Here comes Darnell Campbell trying to get the first down yards. He won't be close. He'll, he'll be out to the 34-yard line, about four yards short. It looks like a punting situation for Brockton. They'll be on their own 35-yard line with about three yards to go for the first down. So it'll be a fourth and about three. Oh, I'd say a fourth and about four. They're putting it back to the 30 four yard line and they have to get up to the 38 yard line for the first down so it's fourth and four I believe it's a punting situation is uh, Joel aside in there at uh, snapper number 55 uh, he's yes, the regular he snapper and Steve Marciano in the quarterback position he'll set up for the punt going back is Derek Sawyer 32 He'll stand it around his own 30-yard line. A low snap again, but uh, Rudy is able to take it and boom it. Oh, boy, what a kick. What a kick. What a kick. Look at this go, and getting down quickly is Jay McGillis, and the ball takes a backwards bounce at about the 12-yard line, but what the a ball was fabulous kicked kick from by Rudy the Harris. 34-yard line. That's uh, 16 yards to the 50, and it goes down to where is it on the 13-yard line? It'll be plus 50, that's for sure. It's at the 13-yard line. It should be about 53 yards. Woo! 16. And that was mostly in the air. That was uh, uh, one quick hop, and then it bounced backwards. But uh, had he gotten a roll, that could have easily been a 65-yard kick. Well, we got a nice kick. That's a break for the boxers as Rudy Harris pushes Denham deep into their own territory. And for the first time, they'll start deep in their own territory after the onside kicks. Now the time for the Brockton defense to do their work, what they do best, stop the team deep in their own territory, force a punt. Let's see what they do. Dick, Flynn, Dick Flynn is alone in the, in the backfield, looks all back. And he'll get the ball from Mike Evans, and he'll get some running room, pushing it out towards the 20-yard line, gain of about seven on the play for Flynn. 8.25 and the clock running in the second quarter, Dedham on top, 13 to nothing. Oh, let's call it second and three for Dedham, a long three, but it's a second and three for Dedham in their own territory and about their own, oh, let's call it just short of the 20-yard line. Touchdowns for Dedham, scored by the quarterback, Mike Evans, number 12, on a one-yard run, and a big pass play from Evans to Steve Poles, the tight end. And one extra point was good, one did not convert. Flynn again to the left side, gets nowhere this time, nowhere at all. Probably lost a yard on that one, Tim. Eric, about four. Eric Drukas was the big man on that play, number 35, who's done a superb job as he took over a defensive end partway through the season. Well, they gave him the line of scrimmage. Let's call it the 20-yard line, third and about three for, for Denham Marauders. 
leading 13 to nothing here at Sullivan Stadium with 7.31 and counting in the second period or the first half of this football game. This is a big play for Dedham and Brockton. I was about to say at this early point of the ball game, we've had an awful lot of big plays, but here's another one. Third and three. It'll be Flynn and he'll be He's stopped. For a loss of two on the play as the Brockton pursuit from the right side of the defensive line was there. David Grind along with waiting for the bodies to get up off the ground well we won't be able to see who was who else was in there but grind was one of them and the boxers do the job on defense stalling this marauders drive and perhaps shifting the momentum just a bit i think it has to happen they just stopped them off they didn't come anywhere near making a first down It's fourth and about three uh, just short of the 20 yard line and again dave flynn is back in punt formation for denham and into a stiff wind we saw that 17 yard punt he had a few minutes ago he's got a tough wind to face Harris and Marciano are on the Dedham side of midfield, and the ball will bounce back and be downed at about the 34-yard line by ball, a Dedham player. So another break. Kicked from the 20, it went up to the. That's about a 14-yard kick. Well, Brockton. Oh no, out to the. That's the 34 is where it was downed. About a 14-yard kick, two punts by Dedham. Neither one was impressive. Now Brockton has excellent field position, first and 10 in Dedham territory on their 34-yard line. Let's see what the Brockton offense does in this series. This is almost a must-score situation, isn't it, Charlie? I would have to agree with that, Tim, completely. Marciano and DeGrace both to the left side. And it is Harris, ahead to the 30, gain of about four. Uh, do, uh, is Tony DeGrace in there? Yes, he is. Yes. Okay, so he, he's he recovered okay. from that shot he took on that kickoff. That is still a question in my mind of whether a flag should have been thrown. But we'll find out at halftime what, what the situation was on that. Second and about, let's call it uh, a long five for Brockton on one just inside the 30-yard line of Dedham. Marciano wide to the right. Chris Murphy on the sidelines. He has been into the game since uh, shaking up a leg. And Darnell Campbell ahead for about a yard. Stopped by Franco Musto. And one other denim tackler. Well, we have a gain of a yard. We have third and about four for Brockton. Let's call it third and four. Again, a key play for Brockton in this series. I don't think they'd be going for it. They wouldn't be punting this far deep into uh, denim territory naturally. But they'd like to make the first down on this particular play, not to have to use a fourth down. And they'll call a timeout to Time make sure they do it right. Bob Zarinskis is coming over to the sideline to confer with Coach Armand Colombo. First time out of the game for the boxers. Dedham has used one. They each have four remaining here in the first half. We haven't gotten our first quarter stats. They're supposed to bring statistics out to us. Maybe they've forgotten the orphans out here on the on the front deck <laughs> but, uh, they compile statistics for each of the quarters here at Sullivan Stadium we'll get halftime stats for you well I'll tell you at this point I'm sure everybody in attendance here including all of the Dedham fans are they are pleasantly surprised a lot of us here are in a mild state of shock we're not panicking naturally however with 526 remaining in the first half of football and Dedham leading 13 to nothing and of course, I think they probably set a record, uh, maybe a high school record, a national high school record for recovering three consecutive onside kicks. I mean, this is, uh, this is weird. It's just weird. I've, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, Tim, you and I have seen many football games over the years together. I might have seen a few more than you, only because I'm quite a bit older <laughs> than you are. However, it, um, I can't remember ever three onside kicks in a row, let alone recovered by the kicking team. Well, teams so. have tried it against Brockton, especially recently, just in an effort to keep it away from Harris and Comer and Marciano and the gang in the, in the deep backfield. Adam Williams, yeah. Well, let's but, see. But uh, this is strange, and it's been a strange game. The boxers trying to turn things around here on the third and about four and a half. Harris pulled from behind. Rudy's he's going to push ahead, and he's got the first down. He's got the first down. Oh, Rudy. strong Rudy. running. Rudy Harris Second and doing third what effort. he does so well. And he is pumped up. He's not one to show a lot of emotion, but he was coming out of that pile, feeling the uh, winds change just a bit here as the boxers try to put together a drive and get some points on the board here with five minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first half. With a first down just short of the Dedham 20-yard line, Brockton's in the huddle calling their play. Let's see what Coach Colombo has up his sleeve in this particular situation. Here's that strong effort of Rudy Harris. Gets caught by the sleeve, gets pulled, and pushes ahead to the 20-yard line. And it is there Rudy again. Darnell. It's Darnell Campbell across Darnell. the 10. Darnell wants to score. Touchdown. 
Again, Donnell Campbell with superior running power, and I mean power, was hit. If we have that on replay, Tim, we'll see at least three Denham players had good shots at him. And I, I don't know if one of them was Dave Flynn. On the third and about four and a half. Harris pulled from behind. Rudy's he's going to push ahead. He's got the first down. He's got the first down. Oh, strong running. Rudy Harris. Second and doing third what effort. He does so well. And he is pumped up. He's not one to show a lot of emotion, but he was coming out of that pile. Feeling the uh, winds change just a bit here as the boxers try to put together a drive and get some points on the board here with five minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first half. With well, the first down just short of the Dedham 20 yard line, Brockton's in the huddle calling their play. Let's see what Coach Colombo has up his sleeve in this particular situation. Here's that strong effort of Rudy Harris. Gets caught by the sleeve, gets pulled, and pushes ahead to the 20 yard line. And it is there Rudy again. Darnell. It's Darnell Campbell across Darnell. the 10. Darnell wants to score. Good time. Good time. Again, Darnell Campbell with superior running power, and I mean power, was hit. If we have that on replay, Tim, we'll see at least three Denham players had good shots at him. And I, I don't know if one of them was Dave Flynn or not. Whatever it was, Darnell Campbell scores Brock the first touchdown of the episode, making the score with 4.51 remaining in the first half. 14 to 6. Now, Brockton, let's see if Brockton goes for the extra point. Jimmy Butler is on the field. Jimmy Butler is on the field, number 16. It looks like Brockton's going to go for the kick. At this point, they want to get the closest thing to a sure thing with Jim Butler doing the kicking. Oh, timeout on the field by Dedham. Called by Dedham. Going to go for an onside yeah, extra point, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we don't know what these coaches, in a game like this, a coach can come up with an occasional play or two that's very different than what he's done uh, throughout the season. So, well, the score is 14 to 6. Well, let's take a look at how the boxers got their six points. Darnell Campbell with the big effort after Rudy Harris set up the play with the big third down run. And there he goes. The last five yards unaccompanied. And the boxers are on the board. Dedham picked up their first extra point on Dave Flynn's kick and then missed their second. So that's where you got the 13 to 6 score. And Jim Butler waiting to get his first shot at the extra point here in the first half. Crucial, crucial touchdown for the boxers. Oh, they, they, not only to get the points, but to get it that way, to, to demonstrate how that running game has worked throughout the year. Butler's kick just does get over one of the defenders it's and good. through for the point. Seven. Now Brockton will be kicking off for the first time this afternoon, and let's see if Brockton kicks deep or if they try the onside kick. That would be very interesting. I, I a taste of their own medicine. It is the boxers' first kickoff. It's a, amazing to think that at 4:51, the Brockton will be kicking off for the first time. Jimmy Butler at his own 40. I see uh, the umpire is Gene Smith, and Gene Smith has continues to put the pounds on around the. His girth. He has an abdominal girth that continues to increase. He's the umpire in the game. We're going to take a look at uh, Rudy Harris and Darnell Campbell. And uh, I've been told there's something interesting coming up here. Oh, he's going to get together with uh, his counterpart for Dedham. Uh, we've missed it apparently after the uh, touchdown. The two leading scorers in Division I uh, high fived each other. Rudy Harris and Dave Flynn. Harris, 162 points on the year. Flynn, 132. And Jimmy Butler set to kick off. He'll go down the middle. And a collision at the 10 yard line. Taken there by Joe O'Connor. He'll get across the 20 and be hit by oh, Tony, Tony Comer. Whoa, Tony bang. Let's see that guy making many tackles. Tony's fast. He's probably the fastest player, fastest man on the football team. Number 11, Tony Comer, sophomore for Brockton High School. Good defensive man. Now let's take a look at it. Flynn and Harris with a handshake. Looks a little bit like Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas. Kiss, kiss. But anyway, first down for Dedham. Just ball just outside the 25-yard line. They have a first down, their own territory. And let's see what they do with 445 remaining in the first half of football here at Sullivan Stadium. Let's see if the Brockton defense is able to stop them and get hold of the ball again before the half ends. Mike Evans, the quarterback, with the lone flag, setback and a flag. Flag. What do we have here? The line judge, I think, called the flag against Dedham, I believe. What he called, I'm not yes, sure. Yes, it is against Dedham. That's for, that's for certain. 
And the Brockton players on the sidelines well, are waving their arms and waving their helmets, trying to get this crowd pumped up. One of the interior linemen, Tim, I believe, lifted up, which is an automatic five-yard penalty against an offensive player when he does that. One of the, one of the interior linemen do that five yards. So now Dedham has a more serious situation in their own 20 with a first and 15. We'll see if they go to the air as they have a few times already today. No, it'll be Flint trying to get to the right side. He'll get back close to the original line of scrimmage and does get to the original line of scrimmage uh, past the 25 yard line. Joe DeMori on the tackle. Well, the second Jay down, McGillis. and let's call it nine, Tim, for, uh, for Denham. Dave Flint showing his strength this afternoon, running the ball, and when you think he stopped for a yard or two, he picks up three or four more. Fine, strong high school fullback. I saw Flynn on Thanksgiving Day coverage on the Boston news stations, and he uh, was pumping his team up before the game and then let him on the field. He's a leader in the locker room as well. This is Flynn again. again to the left side, got some blocking, and he'll get a couple on about the 29-yard line. Bobby Toe there on the tackle. I want to say that he's doing a fine job. There's no question about his ability and his strength and his durability. However, the second half, if they continue to use Flynn to the extent that they're using him against a team with Brockton's defensive strengths and abilities, it has to show its mark. He, his efficiency will be con considerably lower, I would think, in the fourth period. Well, that's why it was crucial for the boxers to get on the board on that last drive because momentum can do a lot to get the adrenaline going for you and keep you active in the second half when you normally would be tired. Third and six for Dedham in their own territory in their own 29-yard line. Once again, a big play. Evans back to pass. He's got a man on the right sidelines, but overthrows him badly. Bowles was the intended receiver, covered well by Bill McCoy, and the Marauders will have to punt. It appears that Brockton will get possession with about three minutes remaining in the first half because I believe that Dave Flynn will be back in punt formation, will punt the ball away. Now remember this, Dave Flynn has punted twice today for an average of 16 yards. So neither one is impressive, plus the fact this time again, he's kicking against whatever win there is here at Sullivan Stadium. Marciano and Rudy Harris are both deep. And I think they would like nothing better than to get the hands of the football and go the distance. He'll kick this one a line drive across midfield and Steve Marciano will watch it bounce. It'll roll down to around the, that got kicked. It'll well, that down was a at the 33-yard line. He got the roll, got the roll. Brockton will take a first down with three minutes and six seconds remaining in the first half. First down, their own territory, and about the 20, where are they going to spot the ball? On the 30, oh, just outside the 32-yard line. A reminder, the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association is committed to good sportsmanship. Sportsmanship, citizenship, and responsibility are the trademarks of high school activities. Support school activities with your own displays of good sportsmanship and help encourage America's youth to accept the responsibility which freedom demands. The MIAA bringing you Super Bowl action today. There goes Rudy, Rudy Harris. There goes the Rudy. 40, still on his feet, pushing Rudy. towards the first down. He'll be stopped about a yard and a half short and still on his feet, getting Rudy. down close to first down yardage. What did the fellow tell us from Channel 38? He thinks Rudy is the eye of the tiger. He and today, in those last two runs of Rudy's, he is determined. He wants to leave a high school football a winner. Rudy is. Harris gaining eight yards, making a second and down, second down and two yards for Brockton. One thing that's been typical of Rudy Harris is that he's led by example. He is uh, not a braggart. He just does his job and does it well. But in recent weeks, he has really developed into a, a leader and uh, you see him out there uh, slapping hands with Michael Lewis, getting this team ready, as the boxers want to call a timeout, their second of the first half. And he has developed into that kind of a role model in uh, a lot of ways. With all of the publicity that the fellows like Rudy Harris and Donnell Campbell, you know, they're both perfect young gentlemen, Tim. I mean, they, they, as you said, they're not braggarts. They're very modest. Uh, they're just typical young teenage boys, senior high school boys, enjoying what they do best, in this case, is playing football. But this is true for so many of the Brockton players. We shouldn't single out just Rudy and John Alvin being gentlemen, because we can talk about anyone in the lineup or any one of the boys on the bench. Uh, when you're talking about Bobby Zarinskis, or you're talking about Tony Comer, you're talking Danny Pettinato, you're talking about Joe Lassard. Every one of these boys is a fine boys, which is they're a credit to themselves, a credit to their schools, and credit to their families. Armand Colombo wouldn't have it any other way either. He's uh, just as concerned about good young people as he is about good young players, and that's been a trademark of Brockton teams, in spite of what a lot of people like to say about poor sportsmanship over the years, and running up the score and 
dirty play. It's all imaginary. 2.21 to go, second and two, and back to pass Zerinskis. He won't get away and he'll lose the ball, but it looks like he's got it back. Nope, oh, not. Nope, got, got the ball. ball. Boy, oh boy. The fortunes of football here are showing up today. Brockton has loses the ball and about their own 29 yard line to Dedham. Bob Zerinskis was sacked and lost control of the ball and he was hit. I don't know. Mark Scahill, linebacker for the Marauders is the one who came up with it. He and a teammate were in the backfield to get a hold of Bob Zerinskis and uh, number 10 just couldn't get away and lost the ball. Well, the Brockton defense again is being, being put to a very severe test, 13 to seven. And with two minutes and 12 seconds remaining here in the first half of football, it'll be Brockton will be doing well to get off this field with a 13 to seven score, barring I'm sure Flynn is going to lynch. Uh, Flynn is going to get this ball at least most of the time in this this close to the in Brockton territory. Musto goes in motion. They've got a lot of receivers out there, and they will go to the air. Evans over the middle, incomplete. Pass intended for Sawyer, who is cutting across and ran into Jay McGillis territory. It'll be second and ten from the 29. Well, we have a second on the clock to stop in that play with 2:09. It's a second down. There's the ball popping loose from Zerinskis, and then pops loose again, and that's when it was jumped on by Scahill. It's the second turnover of the game, but uh, that doesn't indicate how many times Dedham has been able to take advantage of Brockton mistakes, the three onside kicks, the penalty on the uh, bad snap on the punt, and they've turned it into 13 points and are looking to get a few more before halftime right. with 2.09 to go. Look for Flynn on this play. He's got it, and he'll go to the 25, push ahead to the 22-yard line, dragging tacklers just like Harrison Campbell. Down to the 23-yard line. That'll be a third down, and let's call it five. Oh, maybe a long four for Dedham. In Brockton territory on Brockton 23-yard line, just outside the 23-yard line. Flynn had crawled ahead to about the 22, but they'll mark it back between the 23 and the 24, so it will be a third and four situation. In a minute and 41, and counting in the first half of football here with a score 13 to seven in favor of Dedham. And the words big play come to mind again. Very big play. Dedham stacked to the right side, and they will give to Flynn, and he'll run that way, and he'll push ahead close to the first down, but it looks like he'll be short. He'll be short by at least a yard, maybe a yard and a half, but it'll be a fourth down situation. There's a minute and 20 seconds and counting here in the first half. And I don't know why Dedham's not calling it well. Is it, well, they get a fourth and less than a yard. Four, fourth and less than a yard. I don't know why they don't call a timeout. In case they get this first down, they'll have much more time. But... Evans went to the sideline, and now he'll call a timeout. Mike Evans has just called the timeout after getting the play selection from Coach Bob Lynch. So the clock stops with 59 seconds to go here in the first half. Well, regardless what happens in the remaining 59 seconds of this first half of football, Tim, there's no question that we're all very surprised at the score being 13 to 7. The fact that in, at this stage of the game, it appears that Bro uh, Brockton is being outplayed by Dedham. Now, whether Dedham can keep this up for another half of football, I think that Dedham really needs a touchdown here in order to be feel anywhere comfortable because 13 to seven against Brockton certainly is not a comfortable score. Brockton has really not shown uh, its a total ability at this point. Uh, the Donnell has had a couple of good runs scoring the Brockton, the sole Brockton touchdown. Rudy has shown some strength, but they've had several bad breaks. A lot of bad things have happened to Brockton. The three onside kicks, a couple of penalties, that fumble on the sack by Bobby Zerinskis. Uh, recovered by Dedham, deep in Brockton territory. Uh, a lot of things have happened. I don't see how a second half can be quite as uh, disastrous, shall we say, for Brockton High School. The fact that they're just leading, losing 13-7 in itself is a plus. Well, it seems to me the one way you're going to beat Brockton if you're going to do it is to mix them up, to try new things, to confuse them. And that's what Dedham has done thus far by using the onside kicks and some other things from their bag of tricks to uh, unsettle what has become a very smooth running Brockton machine. Tim, here we have up. a fourth and one situation. Go We're gonna go to, I, I, let's watch the quarterback sneak and then we'll watch number 44, Flynn. It is Evans and he's he not going make to make it. He did not make it. Stopped at the 20 yard it. line and Brockton will take over on downs. Now that is a su superb, a superb defensive effort by the Brockton line. Again, Dedham went to the well once too often. Oh, wait a minute, where are they, they have, spotting they that ball? I watched the, the headlines, but he was in back of the, tw he was on the 20 and a half yard line. And now where is he standing? 
No, he didn't make it. The ball is resting on the 20. It's a first down for Brockton. Let's get the signal from the They're official. Gonna They're going to measure it. They're going to measure it, but they still well, question it. They, they missed it by almost a half a yard. And you can see from here that that's not even close. But that is kudos, boy, to that Brockton defense. Again, Dedham went to this quarterback sneak once too often, and they just didn't make it. Why they've got a guy that can pick up five or six yards like this, uh, this fullback, number 44. We see on the... Uh, to our left side of the field, and it's on the big screen on the Diamond Vision. Chris Chris Murphy heading towards the clubhouse on crutches, and he's lost in the crowd. Brockton, as we get the signal, has taken over on downs, but a big loss. Chris Murphy now out of out of eye shot, heading up towards the uh, clubhouse. One thing we can remember, and he will not be back, I assume. Chris was injured in the Lemonster game, and I'm sure that Brockton felt his absence. They certainly did on both the offense and the defense. And now the boxers take over. 53 seconds to go after another strong defensive stand from their own 20, first and 10. Harris pushing ahead, staying on his feet, being pulled down from behind, and still they hang on. And Rudy's going to break away. He never heard a signal. He never heard a whistle. Whistle is blown. Well, we have a timeout on the field. What do we have? Timeout from Brockton. Rudy picked up about nine yards in that play. So it'll be second and one, 43 seconds remaining in the first half. Brockton has the ball. And Coach Colombo is uh, conferring now with quarterback Bob Zorinskis. Are they going to throw? Well, that'll be very interesting. They've got time for at least three plays, maybe more. If they can pick up the first down, they'll have time for four or four, or maybe five plays, depending on how quickly they've uh, taken on. This is their third time out, I believe, Tim. Right. So they have two more remaining. High school football allows five timeouts each half, and they're not cumulative. You use them up or you lose them. Five, one and a half, the first half, five, the second half. So you don't carry them over. Both bands getting set to go at halftime, the Dedham High School band that you saw playing the national anthem, and of course the excellent Brockton High School marching band, halftime dancers, majorettes, and cheerleaders for the final performance for all the senior members of the team and the band and the halftime performers. Tim, I can't repeat. The fact that Brockton has the ball and they're losing only 13 to seven is amazing after all of the bad things that have happened in the small this afternoon. If uh, the breaks had gone the other way, this could easily be a blowout with Brockton up by 25 points. Marciano on the screen pass. He'll have the first down. He was out past first down yardage. Now he's gonna have to do it again. And he just about does. He'll the get the down. first down. That'll stop the clock. That'll stop the clock. Come on, 29, 28. Stop the clock. You've got a first down. 28 seconds remaining in the first half of football. I think Brockton will exercise another timeout here, giving, leaving them one more. Well, Steve. And we'll follow Steve Marciano on this play. You see, he picks up the first down yardage and then gets pulled backwards. They're going to measure, but there's no question. Again. This is the first down, Tim. They're just going through the motions. I guess he wants to be on the TV camera. Chris Sammy does. It's yeah, on the line. No if they don't make this. it, that means the chains are wrong. That's right. Or, or they're Here's measuring something that doesn't have to be measured. Both the ball and the marker on the same side. That play took 15 seconds off the clock. That was one of the longer plays you're going to see. Well, I think that uh, I'm in Colombo. I don't know if he's going to, I think he's going to throw. I think he, he, uh, he also wanted to avoid taking the time out there. He did avoid taking the time out when they took the measurement. He made the call, but the clock is running now with 17 seconds to go. And the boxer's running out of time. Zorinsk is back to throw. He's got some pressure on him. He's trying to get out of the pocket and can't. Pulled down from behind by Steve Poles. And they'll use their time out here. That's their fourth time out, I believe. They've got four seconds. They only tie one play. They'll... He'll just throw deep. He'll send Marciano into Grace deep and just let it fly. Hail Mary full of grace. Or maybe it's Hail Mary oh, to Tony to grace. Yeah, fine. I hope you're right. Big crowd here. Sullivan Stadium on this cool but sunny Saturday afternoon in December. Uh, the Division 2 and 3 games being played here today as well. The Division 2 game ended with Drake at defeating... Uh, Beverly this morning, and now Foxborough and North Attleboro will play following this game. They'll have a chilly afternoon to play ball this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. That's a mild way of putting it. Four seconds on the clock. We have to assume that this will be the last play of the first half, barring a penalty against the offensive team, which could uh, prolong the play. The one more, but assuming nothing of that nature happens, 
This will be Brockton's last play. They're on the 29-yard line. They mean they're 71 yards away from a touchdown, a tying touchdown, may I say, because a touchdown now would bring Brockton up to 13 points, where Dedham missed up on the second uh, point after touchdown attempt. Well, Brockton's lining up. Marciano and DeGrace are both split left to the wide to the left and to the right. Well, they'll give the ball to Rudy Harris, and they'll run out the clock that way. He brought down at the 34-yard line, so the first half will end with the surprising Denham Marauders using a lot of tricks and a solid defense to build a 13-7 lead over the Brockton Boxers at halftime. And uh, those uh, onside kicks certainly were the difference, but you have to credit the defense of Dedham as well. When was the last time you saw a Brockton team held to seven points in a half? Well, it it's been quite a while, obviously. Uh, the Lemons game, they scored 12 points. But nevertheless, uh, I think Coach Colombo, I don't want to think for Coach Colombo, and I don't pretend to think for Coach Colombo. But he has to be a little bit consoled by the fact that the score is 13-7. to They are within striking distance. One score will put them back, uh, put them on top for the first time today. But this could easily be a much bigger deficit. Uh, again, the Brockton defense stiffened a few times. Well, Brockton, Denham. Brockton, Tim, as we know, historically is, is a strong second half team. I, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but their third period are usually very, very strong. This the test of the game will be the third period, in my opinion. Uh, Denham, since their second touchdown, uh, has really not offensively shown us that much. In fact, they've shown us very, very little. A Flair's uh, scored, uh, made some uh, ga good gains, but uh, I was so surprised with a third, a fourth down and less than a yard to go for first down. They tried the quarterback sneak. I mean, I, I think that could end up being a very key play in this football game. Because had they got that first down, deep in Brockton territory, they would have, again, been in a position to score again. The element of surprise only works once, most times. And that time, you would have expected Flynn to get the ball to pick up the one yard. He did not. And they did not score. And the boxers go to the locker room trailing only by six. They will come back for the second half without the services of big Chris Murphy, apparently, who left the field on crutches. And we'll see what happens as the uh, third quarter begins in a few minutes. Right now, we turn things over to Vincent Macrina and the Brockton High School marching band for their halftime show.
I'm Russ Francis, the New England Patriots. Although football is an important part of my life, I've worked very hard to achieve many other goals throughout my life. I'm proud of the fact that I once set the national high school javelin record, that I was drafted to play professional baseball, and that I've become a pretty good airplane pilot and skydiver. One thing is for sure, I couldn't have done these things if I'd been using drugs. If you want to be the best, if you want to become more than you thought you could be, then stay away from drugs and alcohol abuse. You can reach your goals in life without drugs. Back to Sullivan Stadium, Foxborough for the Division I Super Bowl, getting set for second half action with the boxers trailing the Dedham Marauders 13 to seven. And a uh, quick mention of that public service announcement featuring Russ Francis of the Patriots. That was produced by the uh, Boston Neighborhood Network cable uh, system. And they uh, put that together for the Governor's Alliance Against Drugs. And we congratulate them on that effort. They've been showing those PSAs on the Diamond Vision screen here all day today. Well, uh, certainly an eventful first half. I'm talking to Charlie Bergeron of WBET. 
at halftime, and he says, that's the strangest half of football he's ever called. Yeah, it was, certainly was weird. It was right out of uh, Friday the 13th movie <laughs> and the things that happened. Uh, we did discuss, incidentally, that ruling on uh, that third onside kick that Denham uh, caught in the air. The ruling is that they do have to give a boy an opportunity to catch the kick, but there's a difference of opinion up here whether or not uh, Tony DeGrace, number 45 of Brockton, was in a position. In my opinion, he was. Uh, in my opinion, the uh, the official closest to the play blew it, frankly. Uh, but that's just my opinion, and that and a couple of 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee, Mr. Donut. But however, the score is 13 to 7, as you mentioned. We're starting the third period of play. Uh, Brockton is going to be uh, receiving the kick again. And well, Brockton received the open kickoff. Apparently, they the, uh, uh, Dedham, Dedham won the toss yeah. initially and, and elected to kick off because and, they. Uh, because they had that they onside. They knew what they wanted to do with it, and it worked. Well, they've had four kickoffs, three kickoffs. This is their fourth. Let's see if they try the onside again. Brockton has its fast men up front, Jay McGillis, Billy McCoy, Joe Demore, Carlton Campbell, and Tony DeGrace, the five men up front between the 45 and the 50-yard line. And now we have Dave Flynn, the uh, all-purpose star for Dedham, getting ready to kick off the ball again for his fourth kickoff. Indicative of the kind of first half it was uh, the duo of Darnell Campbell and Rudy Harris combined for just 61 yards rushing and 20 of that, one-third of that yardage came on the one touchdown by Darnell Campbell. So they really haven't been able to get that offense going. The rushing came through on one drive, but the boxers hoping to get something started right here as they start the second half. But with all of the mistakes, all mistakes of the bad things that happened in Brockton, they're down 13-7. I think that's a plus. You, know, you say Friday the 13th. This really could have been a horror show for Brockton. And they kick long. It'll go to Adam Williams, and he'll bounce it at the 15-yard line and try to find some room along the sidelines. He'll go out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Well, Run out by 23, Franco Musto for the Denim Marauders. Well, here comes the Brock offensive team on the line to start the, on the field, I should say, to start the third period with a first and 10 on their own 26-yard line. Quarterback Bob Zerinsis comes in with a play from Coach Armand Kellum. Let's see if the Boxers can get going with a steady, deliberate offense on this drive. Marciano and DeGrace both split wide to the right. Boxers trailed in this game 13 to nothing before the touchdown by Darnell Campbell. Rudy Harris bouncing off bodies at the line of scrimmage and unable to get much farther. Picked up a yard, maybe two at the most. Let's call it second and nine for Brockton. You know, representatives of local school committees, school superintendents, school administrators, athletic directors, coaches, game officials, and physicians numbering close to 500 voluntarily contribute their time and service to more than 30 MIAA standing committees. The efforts of these men and women are the strength and backbone of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. The MIAA salutes all who serve as MIAA committee members in behalf of the 160,000 MIAA student athletes across the Commonwealth. Pitch back to Campbell. Nowhere to go. Rudy. That's Harris. Up the loss. Up the loss. Up the two-yard loss. It would be third, and I'd say about 11. That pitch out to Donnell Campbell was diagnosed perfectly by the Dedham defense. Now we have a third and long, Tim. My mistake in call, Charlie. It was Rudy Harris on the carry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was 32, not 30. My mistake also. I fall on But we have third and long, and let's see if Coach Colombo sends in a pass play deep in their own territory. They're in their own 20-09-yard line. And let's call it third, and uh, I'll call it third and 12. That swarming defense of Denham did the job on that play, and now Bob Zerinskis with a straight drop, looking short, looking for Harris, and he's hit instantly. Gets away from that one man, yeah, but can't get away him. far. He was hit on the play by Matt Pellegrini, the linebacker, and staggered out for an extra yard, but they'll be in a punting situation now. So once again, the Denham defense that only allowed 55 points all season is proving why they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah, with 9.09 and counting in the third period, and with a stiff breeze, Rudy Harris of Brockton will be punting against the wind. Now, let's see what happens with Brockton. Uh, see, number 32, Sawaya. They're very fast, sprinting halfback. is back, single, so single safety. This wind Rudy played Harris havoc with the punts of Dave Flint going in this direction. Let's watch the snap. The second quarter. Go side. Good snap. And a good rush, and it's Locked. blocked. Harris gets it back, but he'll be stopped at the 16-yard line, and Dedham has the ball. And it's, he's still on his feet, but he'll be down at the 17-yard line, and that's where the Marauders will take over. Well, so much is happening to this Brockton football team here this afternoon at Sullivan Stadium. 
it's a situation that uh, nobody expected. I don't think Dedham didn't expect it, but they have a first down deep in Brockton territory in the Brockton 17 yard line. First and 10 for Dedham, leading 13 to 7 with 8.34 remaining in the third period of football. Boy, everything that can go wrong has so far today. Punting game, first time around, the snap got away from Rudy Harris and he was tackled down in deep in his own territory and had the intentional grounding penalty tacked on to it. And this time the block puts the Marauders in scoring position once again. Mike Evans, the quarterback, and uh, timeout, on the field. timeout on the field. Called Brockton by Brockton. The timeout. Brockton. So the boxers want to make sure they know how to prevent Dedham from getting into the end zone as the Marauder crowd on the far side of the field really gets going. They've got a lot of things to cheer about so far today. We have about 20,000 stunned fans here this afternoon. Brockton leading, losing in this football game, 13 to seven. And apparently to this point, haven't been outplayed by Dedham. You know, whether it's aggressiveness or bad luck, but certainly luck has been a part of it. Uh, and the part of Brockton, I mean, three onside kicks recovered by the kicking team it has to be a record of sorts, either in Massachusetts or the world. Serious mistakes Brockton made uh, on offense. Bad snap from center, although it was in snap, it was difficult to handle. It was uh, enabled uh, Dedham to score the first touchdown, and now this kick was blocked, although Rudy caught the block kick and advanced it a couple of yards. It still ball goes over to Dedham, first and 10 on the Brock, the 17-yard line. Again, we we'll repeat, with Dedham leading 13 to seven. It's been such a cockeyed game, Charlie. There were only four first downs for each team in the first half. Neither team moved the ball that well, but Dedham took advantage of the breaks and the excellent field position to put their 13 points on the board. This is Flint trying to get around the right side. He'll get a couple down to about the 13-yard line. Tony Lewis came from behind and helped out Bill McCoy on the tackle. Well, as we've said, he said in the first half, and we'll repeat it here in the third period, this is a very big series for the Brockton defensive unit. That's about a three-yard gain. It'll be second and about, oh, I'd say a long six, a short seven, four, Denham, on Brockton's 14-yard line, just inside the 14-yard line. Harmon Colombo treating it as the big series that it is. He's brought Rudy Harrison at the defensive end spot was on the last play. I believe that was Rudy. He's not on the play right now. Flynn trying to go to that right side and he'll get to the 10 and be stopped there about three yards short of the first down. 82 Bobby Toe there on the hit. It'll be a third and about three, I believe. I think he reached the 10 yard line, Tim, as you said. Well, Rudy, let's see where they spot the ball. And Rudy they spot the ball just inside the 10 yard line. So it'll be third down and let's call it three a short three for Dedham. They're calling it two on the scoreboard. It is a long two or a short three. Eric Jukas checks out, replaced a defensive end on the left side by Rudy Harris. And now Jay Bercy comes in as the second linebacker as Bobby Toe exits. Big, big play here for both teams. Very big defensive play for the boxers trying to Important stall play. Crucial Dedham. play. Flynn in motion. Pass play maybe. Evans looking to throw short across the middle. Incomplete. It was almost caught. It was almost intercepted. Diving across in front of Steve Poles was Jay McGillis. And he may have gotten a hand on it to knock it away from the diving Steve Poles. So it'll be a fourth down situation for the Marauders. Now, you know, I, I, again, they put Flynn in motion to the right. And whenever he does that, they usually pass the ball. You know, with a fullback like Flynn, when you're on that deep, you just give him the ball and give him the ball and give him the ball. But again, I can't check and guess the uh, Dedham coach. He's winning this ball game right now, 13 to seven. And Dave Flynn, the all-purpose fullback, linebacker, and kicker on to try a 27-yard field goal. The kick is up, and it looks pretty good. It is. Dave Flynn, that's the first time we've seen a field goal against Brockton all year. 16 to seven, Adam leading. They'll kick off again to Brockton. So a uh, partial victory for the Brockton defense as they stop Dedham with only three points after the Marauders took over on the block punt at the 17-yard line. But three points is three points, and the Marauders have now opened up a nine-point lead over the Boxers, who really haven't been able to generate much offense. And now it's, is the time. It's been a very funny game. They haven't had the opportunity to get the offense. I believe that the Brock, the defense was on the field. Did you get the time of possession the first half? I was just about to look for that, Charlie, and it seems to be the only thing they don't have. They don't have the time. The I believe sheets. the time of possession it had the... Oh, wait, here we go. Ball. It's up here at the top. Yeah, Brockton only had the ball for eight, less than nine minutes and Dedham had it for 13. Yeah, almost double, once 50% more, it's, it's 
you can't score without the ball. The fact that Brockton scored seven points to 13 in the first half for Dedham and only had the ball oh, a little over half as long, it's, uh, it's almost a tribute in a way to the Brockton team. However, they're losing this football game 16 to seven. We're in the third period. There are six minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third period. Brockton will get the ball after this kickoff. Let's see if they kick deep or another onside kick. I don't know how many times they can pull that onside kick successfully. I, I think they're stretching their luck. Again. They do, but yeah. it's a, it'll go longer and be taken by Chris Campbell. He'll have to pick it up a second time and rushes it out to the 35, 37-yard line before he's brought down. That one got away a little bit from Chris, and he dribbled it and picked it up, but the boxers will take over with pretty decent field position at the 37-yard line, first yeah. and 10. Here we go with the Brockton offense. Donnell Campbell, Chris, uh, Rudy Harris, Bobby Zarinskis, Stephen Marciano, and Tony DeGrace, in the offensive backfield and receivers. Jim Kelleher, Peter Genokoulos, Dave Grine, Mike Thorson up front. And again, the boxers playing in the second half without Chris Murphy on either side of the line. High formation, Campbell and Harris. And it's Rudy Harris, the second man through, pushing ahead across the 45, close to first down yardage. Picked up at least nine. Uh, I'd say it's second and maybe one, maybe less than one. Oh, they're going to measure. Yeah, it's going to be close. I believe he's shot by about half they're, the length of a football. He's, he's short. Point. Second down. And now they're going to call off the measurement, apparently, and get the clock rolling again with 6.33 to go here in the third quarter. One thing about this field here, the, van, the uh, lines are so easily uh, distinguishable, it's easy to, to determine where the ball is or some of the problems we've had during the year. Second and one for Brockton, or less than one. Campbell. Got the first down. First down across midfield, still on his feet. Across the 40 before being brought down. Finally tackled by Mike Marr, who came from the defensive tackle position and chased him down. But Darnell Campbell and Rudy Harris combining to get the boxer offense back in gear. Well, if they can keep that up, it's going to be a longer second half for the Dedham Marauders than it was the first half. We have a first down for Brockton. Dedham territory. Let's call it just inside the Dedham 39-yard line. Well, as I said, Harris and Campbell with only 61 yards in the first half. That included the 20-yard touchdown by Darnell Campbell. So that just goes to show that the boxer offense was not up to par. And it's Darnell Campbell again. Puts his head down after a gain of about a yard. And he's stacked up by five or six maroon jerseys led by Captain Dave Flint. Uh, he picked up a couple, I guess, and they give him, oh, let's call it a two-yard game. Let's call it second and eight. Looks like a long eight for Brockton. Uh, they're on about the uh, 30, uh, just, oh, let's, the ball is resting just across the 37-yard line. So second and eight for Brockton. Coach Colombo is ranging far and wide onto that field to call every play. Uh, drifting out past the numbers to get the plays to Bob Zerinskis. I wonder if they're going to ISO on Rudy in this play. Let's, oh. There, there goes to Rudy. Rudy Harris. He's got he's lots of room. The he's down. got he's the corner. Maybe the touchdown. One man to beat. A touchdown, touchdown Rudy Brockton. Harris. From the 37-yard line. 37-yard touchdown run by Rudy Harris. As so often does throughout the season. Brockton now is, is behind 16 to 13. Getting ready for the extra point. Let's see if Coach Columbus decides to go for two. I have Jimmy Butler kick the extra point. Jimmy Butler's going onto the field. Number 16. Trying to get the boxers back to within. A couple of points here. That was the first sustained drive we've seen all afternoon. The scoring that we've had, that's the first real, oh, I'd call it their professional proficiency as we've uh, trimmed the Brockton offense so frequently this year. Let's see if Jimmy Butler can put the 14th point on the board for Brockton. Uh, again, the big rush by Denham, but the kick will be up and through for Jimmy Butler, his second of the day, and the Boxers trail by two. Now we have the momentum. Two. I'm sorry, Tim. <laughs> Things are getting exciting here up in the booth as well as on the field. And Rudy Harris is doing some cheerleading on the sidelines as well. Let's take another look at the devastating strength of Rudy Harris off the line of scrimmage. Following out to the right side, some excellent blocking, opening up that whole right side of the field for Harris. And now he's got the one man to beat. It's Sawyer, who is not going to have a prayer at knocking Rudy out of bounds. And big number 32 picks up the touchdown, his 26th of the season. He led all of Division I in scoring. Now you know why the scouts that are at this football game here today, and there are many, believe me, are drooling when they see it. Number 32 and number 30 run with the ball. There are Donnell made that 
perfect, beautiful run in the first half. It was about a 10-yard run, I believe you have it the, down the there. The touchdown was a 20-yard. 20-yard run, I'm sorry. And Rudy's was 37, and both was done with superb leg strength, leg strength and nice speed. Just a testimony of what they've done so often this season. Now let's watch the Jim Butler kickoff. And it'll be, again, the two deep backs. Sawyer taking the ball, getting to the 31-yard line. He and Musto twice today have nearly collided. The scoring drive for the Boxers, 63 yards. They went four plays, took only a minute and 48 seconds for the touchdown to come up as Rudy Harris well, let's watch took the, the ball 37 yards for the score. The Brockton defense now has the job. The offense did what they had to do. They scored quickly in the third period when they once they had their hands on the ball. Now the defense has to stop Dedham, force them into a punting situation so the offense can get the ball back. Now, I may dwell on it a little too much in games like this, Charlie, but one factor here is that the boxers managed to silence the Denham crowd for at least a couple of minutes and just take away some of that momentum. Flint across the right side. He's got five, maybe eight yards before being brought down. Dave Grind there. And Steve run. Marciano. Excellent run by yards. Smith. I'd say it's second and what, seven or eight? Uh, yard gain is about a second and three. Let's call it second and three. And uh, on their own, uh, let's see, Dedham's on their own 37, just across the 37-yard line, close to the 38-yard line. But uh, throughout the game, and even before the game, the Dedham players, cheerleaders, fans, were all there waving their arms. They are into the game after a tackle. The players are getting up and uh, thrusting the arms into the air. And a little of that is taken away when Brockton scores so quickly and so Convincing. powerfully. Convincingly is a good word for it. Here comes a blitz right oh, up the middle. Oh, what a play. Oh, who was that? Mike Thorson. Oh, Mike Thorson, what a key defensive play by number 60, the co-captain. What strength he showed. He shot the gap and hit the quarterback and the running back. Oh, my gosh. He simultaneously. He tackled Evans and Flynn at the same time. You Boy. saw the blitz coming. He shot through the hole. And let's take another look at it. You're going to see the isolated shot, so you won't see much but that. Bang. Got Flynn by the leg as wow. he brought Evans down, and Mike Thorson showing why he's an all-scholastic. Changes the situation dramatically from second and two for first down. We go to third and eight. Mike Thorson on defense. Superb play. I'm not going to arm wrestle him either, Tim. <laughs> third down and eight. 328 to go, and clock running in the third quarter. Big Dead play in a Brockton. passing situation. Evans back to throw. Chase Harris. Again, I'm not saying what's going to happen for the balance of this game, but Brockton's third period throughout the season has been their strongest period. Thus far, in the third period, although the, we have a touch, uh, a field goal by uh, the Dedham High football team, outside of that play, of course, that was based on a, uh, a, a break again. Now they're forced to punt. A loss of nine on the play Four by the sack by Rudy Harris after the six yard loss forced by Mike Thorson and Dave Flynn will kick from his own 15 yard line in the direction of Steve Marciano who'll finally get the field to punt. Takes it at the 50 and is brought down at the 45 yard line. Dragged down there uh, on the play by Paul Lepsevich, number 70 for Dedham, but a good return by Steve Marciano as the Boxers get the first chance to really take a ball and run with it. An excellent field position there in Dedham territory. Oh, the ball is resting across the 46-yard line of Dedham. Brockton has a first down, and let's see if the offense can keep up the momentum that they started in their last drive. Bobby Zarinskis is in the huddle with a play from Coach Armin Colombo. And a timeout called by Coach Bob Lynch of Dedham, so he wants to stall this momentum before it gets any worse. Well, I'll tell you, they've got, they've got their dander up. I don't know, we don't know naturally what's gonna happen, the balance of this football game. There's two minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the third period here. But again, uh, the uh, the Brockton Sleeping Giant has been awakened, at least in that last drive, and and I think they'll be able to keep it up for the balance of this game. Of course, when, by the time new people are watching this game on Tuesday, <laughs> uh, you'll know the outcome, and. Uh, you probably won't be quite as excited as we are up here in the booth. But that was a two beautiful touchdown runs, one of 20 yards, the other of 37 yard run, 37 yards by Donnell Campbell and Rudy Harris, respectively. And Coach Colombo, who had kept Rudy off the defensive field, Eric Drukas had been doing such an excellent job at defensive end, but Rudy is a dominating player from that position. And let's take a look at Steve Marciano on a solid return brought down by Lepsevich from behind. Yeah. Uh, Harris is such a dominating defensive player that Colombo said, well, let's call out the uh, the big man, 
and he did the job on that last defensive play. Darnell Campbell up the middle, pulling, dragging people down to the 36 yard line. Lost the ball, but it's recovered by Brockton as Musto makes the tackle. That's pretty close to the first down, Tim. I, I would say that may call for a measurement. I think right, with the ball. Let's see where they spot it. Yeah, yeah. the first down for Brockton. It I is. believe it's the first down. Darnell was about a yard short, but when the ball popped loose, I think it was Leon Stefferson who jumped on it. And well, they can measure it, but it's a first down for Brockton. You can, you can, bet the, you can put the house down on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it uh, certainly is. They're Sam bringing the sticks out, but it's a first down it's from first the 36 down. yard line of Dedham. If it's not a first down, they get the wrong size stakes there. But it'll be a first down for Brockton just outside uh, the Dedham 35 yard line. And again, this gives uh, Coach Armin Colombo a little bit more time to talk to Bobby Zerinskis. So the official, with his uh, intention of getting into the TV camera, is giving Brockton a little bit of an edge here. Not much, but a little bit of an edge. That was a 10-yard run, just a little over a 10-yard run by Donnell Campbell, again, with his superb length strength. My God, the, 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 the running in the second half has been exceptional. And, and of course, Donnell's touch on the first half was a beauty, too. Well, maybe the, uh, the adrenaline is pumping a little harder for the boxers, but it's also perhaps the fatigue factor on Dedham, some there of those two-way really players, as Harris pushes across the 30-yard line down to the 29. Hit Musto a, on the tackle. Hit for a one-yard gain and stretches it into a five-yard gain. Rudy Let's Harris, Brockton High School, ball carrier par excellence, along with Daniel Campbell. Second, and let's call it four, Tim, in the 29-yard uh, line of Dedham. See the North Attleboro players into the uh, end zone off to our left. They're getting set to play Foxborough after this one for the Division Three crown. And remember this, Dick Flynn, uh, Dave Flynn is in on defense. Campbell, oh, oh he had five. a hole and it looked like he was going, but he was dragged down from behind by Bill Cunahan. Those are the kind of leg tackles that we've just grown accustomed to seeing Darnell and Rudy break. That time, Cunahan, who's the biggest player on the Denham defensive side, managed to hang on for good and stop Darnell with a gain of about a yard. So we'll be a third down and three and a half. Yard at the most. Let's call it third down and three. Let's see what uh, Bobby Zerinskis is coming into the huddle with the play from Coach Armand Colombo. I think we're going to give it to you, Rudy or Darnell. I don't think he's going to throw the ball in this situation. Not with the running game the way it is, but you never know what the coaches have up their sleeve. It'll be loose. Uh -oh. And. Denham will get the ball. Oh, Brockton drive is thwarted by a fumble. I don't know. A handoff from Bob Zerinskis. Was that going to Rudy or Darnell? I don't know which. I'm not really sure, Charlie. It didn't get in either place. And uh, as a result, the Marauders will hang on to their two-point lead with 44 seconds here in the third quarter. And the tide has turned once again. Yeah, Brockton has seemed to be very effective in going down the field. However, a fumble stops it, and now... Let's see now. I'm anxious to watch this Dave Flynn. He's been playing a lot of defense, and he's now going to be carrying a lot of the ball. Let's see how effective he is now. He's, if he's tiring or if he's still keep going into that. He'll get the ball up the middle for a gain of two across to the 31-yard line. Tony Lewis on the stop. Also in there, I may be Rudy covering Harris. this up, Brockton, Tim, but he just, on that particular play, he just didn't look like he had the zip that he had previously. And now, again, I, I'm not saying the boy doesn't have it. I'm just saying he didn't appear to have it on that particular play. The kind of player that he is, what the way he's led this Denham team all along, he, even if <laughs> Coach Lynch thought it was in the best interest of the team to sit him down on defense for a while, there is no way you're going to gonna need wild horses to drag Flynn to the sidelines. We're going to watch the clock run down here in the third quarter, and Denham will take a two-point lead into the final period from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. The Marauders on top, 16 to 14 in the Division I Eastern Mass Super Bowl. It is going to be a wild fourth quarter, I think, Charlie. Whew, we got ourselves a football game here today. Both sides of the stadium are rocking. Yeah, the, nobody's uh, fans leaving. are on their feet. I think this is one of the largest Super Bowl uh, crowds that I can remember. Uh, been to just about all of the Brockton Super Bowl. This is their ninth appearance, as we know. Uh, this is about as large a crowd as, as, I've, as I've seen at any Super Bowl. We have well over 20,000 people here, at least that's my guesstimation. Well, the score is 16 to 14, Tim. We're going into the fourth period with uh, Dedham in possession with a second down and eight. In their own territory, I'd say they're uh, on about the 30, or let's call it the 31-yard line. 
160,000 students will participate this year in more than 80,000 high school sports competitions among MIAA's 352 member schools. A lot of numbers there. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association encourages you to support your local high school athletic programs and the students who participate in them. The final 11 minutes of play from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. The Dedham Marauders with a second and eight and a two point lead after recovering a fumble just moments ago. Thorson again trying to close up the gap and he and Tony Lewis and others will do it. Eight, stopping eight, Flynn for eight. about a yard gain. Again, Flynn didn't get into that hole as quickly as he did in the first half. And that could be not only his own fatigue, but a little bit on the part of his linemen as well. A couple of those linemen, Mike Marr, Paul Lepsevich, uh, they play both sides of the line. Well, we have a third, and let's call it seven. Now, this is a, another key play. We keep using that phrase, key play. However, it's, it's necessary to use because this is important for Dedham to gain a first down in this, and it's just as important, if not more important, to Brockton to stop them and force them into a punting situation. Third and long, third and seven for the Marauders. Sawyer goes in motion. Seven, He's going to throw. Seven, Here comes Evans, looking to throw. He's... Intended the pass for Sawyer, but it'll be good coverage by Bill McCoy that'll stop that play, and the boxers force Dedham into a punting situation. The defense has been there all day long, and they continue to do the job here as the Marauder offense is stalled, and they really have not put together much of an offense. As, as of the first half, they had uh, 55 yards rushing, 29 yards passing, and had managed to get two touchdowns out of that, mostly because of the excellent field position set up by those onside kicks and by the penalty on the blocked punt and the missed snap on the punt. All these things happen to help out Dedham, and the boxers have just been unable to take advantage of the fact that uh, the defense is playing so well. Uh, not a good kick again. again not a good kick. kick. Get away from it, Brockton. Let it bounce back. It'll bounce right at midfield and be stopped there by uh, Buster Smolak for Dedham. And again, you know, Flynn was wise his third time around on the punt. He, he almost side saddled it in an effort to get a line drive out of it and it worked. He managed to put one out there uh, for about 40 yards. But uh, this time he goes back to the high kick and it'll be short again. The boxers will take over with great field position right at midfield. And Brockton, the ball is resting right on the 50 yard line. They have a first and 10 with 9.59 remaining in this football game. Brockton behind by two points. They were losing behind by six points at the half. It was a field goal in the third period by Dedham to make it 16-7. Then Brockton scored on a 37-yard touchdown run by Rudy Harris. Jim Butler kicked the point. We have a 16-14 football game. Brockton in possession, first and 10 on their own uh, at the 50-yard line. And Dedham taking a timeout. They've used a couple here in the second half. With 9.59 left, one minute, one second past in the fourth quarter. And you know, Charlie, it's kind of a curse that goes along with being as successful as the boxers have been, particularly under Armand Colombo. You have to think at this point that, obviously, if the boxers were to lose this game, it would be a devastating loss for Brockton. Dedham would, would go sky high. Somebody was saying in the press box at halftime that Lemonster is probably here to cheer for Brockton to win because Dedham defeating Brockton would possibly knock Lemonster right out of the top 20 or, or at least replace them with, with Dedham. Right. But uh, that's the one scenario. But even if Brockton were to win, to come back and win this thing, uh, it's going to go as an indication to some people that they just were not themselves, you well, know, that they weren't well, as good as they could have been. Well, that could be. The, the first, the, well, the breaks were called in. Let's call just going with the game now. There this is Darnell Campbell. Darnell. Miles of space as he gets the first down and pushes out to the 25 yard line. From the 50 to the 25, a 25 yard run, I believe. Is that where they're going to spot the ball? Mark it at the 27 where he's pushed out, I think. Pushed out about uh, 28, 29, 29, actually, now. 21 yard run by Donnell Campbell on a simple pitch out. The blocking was beautiful. Blocking was excellent. That's what we have to make more reference to, I think, on plays like that. You, you give credit to the speed of Campbell and Harris, but there was nobody out there to tackle him, and that's because the blockers were doing their job. That time it was the left side of the line that did it. And Darnell Campbell with his second 20 plus run of the day. So Mike Thorson, Peter Giannakoulis, Jim Kelleher, outstanding for the press box at halftime that Lemonster is probably here cheering for Brockton to win because Dedham defeating Brockton would possibly knock Lemonster right out of the top 20 or, or at least replace them with, with Dedham. Well, but uh, that's the one scenario. But even if Brockton were to win, to come back and win this thing. Uh, it's going to go as an indication to some people that they just 
were not themselves, you well, know, that they weren't yeah. as good as they could have been. Well, that could be. The, the first, the, while well, the breaks would call them, let's call, just going with the game now. This is Darnell, Darnell Campbell. Miles of space as he gets the first down and pushes up to the 25 yard line. From the 50 to the 25, a 25 yard run, I believe. Is that where they're going to spot They're going to park it at the 27 where he's pushed out, I think. Pushed out about uh, 28, 29, 29, actually now. 21 yard run by Donnell Campbell on a simple pitch out. The blocking was beautiful. The blocking was excellent. That's what we have to make more reference to, I think. On plays like that, you, you give credit to the speed of Campbell and Harris, but there was nobody out there to tackle him, and that's because the blockers were doing their job. That time, it was the left side of the line that did it. And Darnell Campbell with his second 20-plus well, run of the day. Mike Thorson, Peter Giannakoulis, Jim Kelleher, outstanding football players all, David Bryan. Oh, it's Rudy, Rudy Harris stuck for, stuck for a loss of about three on the play. That's and a seldom seen occurrence. I tell you, Denham, every time the boxers get a little something going on one play, they come right back. Last time it was the recovered fumble. This time the loss of yardage on Rudy Harris's carry. It'll be a two-yard loss. The boxers will have a second and 12 from the 31-yard line. Well, that was a good defensive play by the Denham Marauders. There's no question about it. When you stop Rudy for a loss, you've done a good job. Well, Campbell and Harris in the backfield. Side by side with Marciano at the bottom of your screen. And the short pass out to DeGrace will be incomplete. Booted around out there by a couple of Denham players. It was at the feet of Tony DeGrace, and that'll be a third and long. Third and 12. Now we have, a, a again, a passing situation. Brockton has, to my, uh, according to the statistics, has not completed a pass today. They have not. No. The uh, official stats for the first half indicate that uh, Bobby Zerinskis was 0 for 1. But there was that screen pass out to uh, Steve Marciano, the one where he ran all around the block to get the first down late in the second quarter. Lots of pressure on Zeritskis, and he'll go down at the 40, and it's Dave Flynn. Who else? Correct. The wrong to the Denham 40 yard line will be a fourth down, a punting situation, I believe, for Brock. At this stage, there will be plenty. Rudy Harris will be lining up in punt formation. Rudy's one punt for the day was a doozy, 53 yards, and most of it in the air for Rudy Harris. That, however, was sandwiched around uh, inside a couple of real tragic plays for the boxers today. If you miss the snap. Lining up the center, so he'll be snapping back with Steve Marciano. And there goes Rudy as Sawyer drops back to his own 15 to receive it. The last punt of Rudy Harris was blocked, and this one may go in the end zone. Oh, this is all the way in, in the air, out of the end zone. Almost out of the end zone in the air, and uh, Rudy's strong leg doesn't serve him so well that time as the Marauders will get the touchback and take over at their 20-yard line. Well, we have 8.22 remaining in this football game. The score is still 60-14. Dedham leading Brockton. Dedham has led all the way here this afternoon. 7 to nothing, 13 to nothing, 13 to 7, 16 to 7, and now it's 16 to 14. Tim Cox and Charlie Petty from Sullivan Stadium with 8.22 to go and Denim on top. Interscholastic athletics allow thousands of high school students to strive to be champions in 28 sports for young men and women offered at MIAA member schools. The MIAA encourages you to support your local high school athletics. Mike Evans, the quarterback. And Dave Flynn, the setback. Flynn will get the call. He'll go wide. He'll be brought down by Steve Marciano. Excellent tackle. Oh, gonna... flag! Well, now, what is that for, a face mask? They're going to call either the face mask on Marciano or a late hit on McGillis. McGillis didn't hit him. McGillis flew over him. What is the flag for? It has to be. It looks let's... like it's against Brockton the way they're, they're facing the ball. But let's see what's happening. We're going to watch the replay and see what the uh, call is going to be, but it definitely face is against mask. a face mask, and Steve Marciano was livid. We're going to take a close look at it and even freeze it to get a good shot of this and see whether the mask was ever grabbed. Here comes Flynn, and there's Marciano. Well, he just touched it. He That's may have touched it, but he didn't yard. tackle him by it. It's a five-yard uh, unintentional face mask, so it'll go as a first down no, first and, four. and four from the 26-yard line. Another break there for the Denham Marauders. Thorson rushing in again, and Flint looking to pass the ball, and he's got his man. And he the ball. Incomplete. 
It will be an incomplete pass to uh, Steve Poles, Joe DeMori on the coverage. He was there. He had uh, the inside track on Joe DeMori and Flint hit him with it, but it'll go as incomplete pass. So we have a second and about, oh, let's call it three. It's probably closer to three than four. Dedham has the ball in their own territory on about the 31, uh, almost up to the 32 yard, uh, I'm sorry, 27 yard line. This is a third down situation, is that correct? Or yeah. a second down? No, second down. No, second yeah. down. A third down on the scoreboards, but a second down on the sidelines, and uh, Dedham will call a timeout. It is a second and three after the penalty. And Steve Marciano is still furious as he talks to the coaches at the sidelines. You see 26 in the middle of everything. He made an excellent play on Flynn, and he gets tagged for the penalty. Well, the onus is on the Brockton defense at this point. They have to stop Dedham from getting more first downs. With 7.45 remaining in this game, Dedham just wants to keep possession of the ball. That's why I was surprised that they threw that pass, because with the incomplete pass, the clock has stopped. If they didn't make anything on the uh, ground, the clock, they would have picked up another 35 or 40 seconds off the clock. Because I'm sure they just want to use up the time. With a 16 to 14 lead, they're leading right naturally. However, it's, it's a very tenuous lead. They don't want to give the ball, because of Brockton, Offensive power, as was displayed on the 20-yard touchdown run by Donnell Campbell and the 37-yard touchdown run by Rudy Harris. On any given play, either one of those two players can go all the way, and Dedham knows it. Third, second and about uh, three for a first down on the 27-yard line, their own 27-yard line, Dedham. Flynn on the carry, hit instantly by Bobby Toe and dragged down. Flynn, I repeat again, Jim, Flynn is not the same running back he was in the first half. Unless he gets a second win or something uh, in the latter part of this period, he, at this point, is relatively ineffective. They have a third and about four. Yeah, it's a loss of about, about a half a yard on the play. And Bobby Toe, a senior, one of the seniors who started coming off the bench early in the season and has worked his way into this lineup, made a big, big play there to stop Dave Flynn and force the third down situation. Let's third and long down, three for the Marauders. Let's see if they throw. Flynn, is a oh, Flynn the gets the pitch, and he's got some room. He'll be short, no, stopped no short time. by the Brockton defense. And I say that in the first half, I think Dave Flynn would have picked up that extra couple of yards he needed for that first down. He had the opening. You saw the uh, green in front of him, and he just couldn't turn the corner as the boxer pursuit was there to stop him short of the first down. Yep. It'll be about a yard short. Let's see if they go back in punt formation or if Coach Lynch. Yeah, as you see a little bit of room, and he's slowed down by Jay Bursey, giving time to the rest of the boxers Jay to catch up. Bottom that pile it certainly was. Jay Bursey was the man who slowed Flynn down in the backfield when it appeared that he had some running room. Well, Marciano and Rudy Harris are both deep. They both want to return this punt for a touchdown. And it is Flynn, of course, to kick. He has all day to do so. And just does get it off as Eric Trukas and Flynn takes a dive looking for the penalty. That, that was the slowest developing punt I've ever seen. I think he was waiting for someone to come in. He wanted to get rough to pick up the first down. Brockton now has the ball. No return. The ball went out of bounds on the Brockton 40, almost to the Brockton 42 yard line. So Brockton with 606 remaining in this game has an opportunity to score a touchdown and eat up most of the clock on one of their time-consuming drives that they have executed so beautifully so many times this year. And should the boxers put together a scoring drive, Dedham has already used a couple of timeouts. Dedham has used have three all, timeouts. They don't have, but they have but two left uh, for the remainder of the game should they need them. Right now, the key for the boxers, get on the board. They've got 58 yards to go to the end zone. The key is no mistakes. The key is no mistakes. Here comes Darnell Campbell. One man on the wing. And across the 50. A gain of about nine for Darnell. Stopped on the play by Joe O'Connor. And they'll mark it down at the 50. Running like a force unleashed to give him that ball. No mistakes. Brockton cannot afford to make another mistake like a fumble or anything of that nature. They have no miss blocks. Second and oh, we'll call it two, but it's a short two. It's a short two, a gain of uh, better than eight for Darnell Campbell, who has just gotten stronger as the weeks have gone on ever since being injured in the second or third week of the season. The BC high game. He's come back to really put it together. And this time it's Harris. He's got the first down. The first down to the 47-yard line. Boxers trying to just punch their way through this Denham defensive line and push their way down the field. 
Trailing by two with 5.20 and the clock stopped well, here long yeah, enough yeah. for the first down chains to be moved. The second half of this football game belongs to Brockton. The first half belongs more or less to Dedham because of all of the lucky breaks. I'll call them lucky breaks, uh, just the things that happen. 13 first quarter points for Dedham set up by a couple of onside kicks, three of them actually. And the boxers have come back with 14 of their own. Dedham adding a third quarter field goal. And the fake, Zerinskis going long. He's got Marciano open. Completed. Oh, to the five yard by Steve Marciano. Left behind the Dedham defender. Made a fine catch of a fine pass. Thrown by Bobby Zerinskis. First and goal for Brockton High School. With four minutes and five remaining. The final period of football. Score 16 to 14. Brockton is on the five yard line of Dedham. A 41 yard pass. A big play once again from Bob Zerinskis to Steve Marciano. And credit to Bob Zerinskis for staying in that pocket with three Dedham players coming on him. Here's Steve Marciano beating his man getting open at the 10 and only the fact that he had to turn around to catch that ball prevented that from being a touchdown. If that had been just a hair longer, it would have been in stride and Marciano was good for six you points. You Coach Colombo, to give the ball to Rudy Adano. I don't oh, think, I think he just flipped flip a coin. About a fury to be unleashed here It today. is Rudy Harris pushing, Rudy Harris bouncing down, down, down to the two-yard two yard line. line. Second and goal on about the two-yard line of Dedham. 4.26 in the clock running here in the fourth quarter and things are silent on the sunny side of the field as the boxer fans the boxer players have silenced the denim fans that's, at this point that's what's happened pretty much the boxer fans are jumping into this ball game Brockton is on the denim two yard line with a second and goal tim let's see what coach colombo calls in this play marciano split wide to the right campbell and harris have a touchdown each today for the 14 boxer points zarinskis the keeper that is touchdown. A touchdown for Brockton. 20 to 16. Bob Zarinskis on a quarterback seat from the two yard line. Superb play selection. I don't know who called it. It was Ammon Colombo or who called that play, but it was the right call because Bobby Zarinskis went behind his left guard and beautiful blocking by Mike Dawson in the front of the. Oh, that was a wonderful. That was a picture play. Let's catch it on. on uh, We'll get the replay in just a moment. Both teams have used the quarterback sneak in that situation to their advantage. And now we'll see what the boxers try to do. They want to go for two. I think that was behind Mike Thorson and Jim Kelleher, if I'm not mistaken. That's who the blocking demons were in that play. They want to go for two, and Army Colombo wants a timeout. I think they're going to lose their the delay a game. Let they get the play off, and it won't go anywhere. And Rudy, Kent, Rudy Harris has stopped short. Lots of confusion on the Brockton sideline as uh, Armand Colombo tried to get the timeout called. Now, for the first time, Jim, this afternoon, Brockton is leading in this football game 20 to 16. And here's how they did it. Zerinskis on the keeper pushing his way ahead. And the boxers take the four-point lead with 3.58 to go. Now, the, again, the onus, Tim, is on the Brockton defense. They have to stop. Dedham has had relatively little offense here today. This is second half, I'm sorry. They've scored a field goal. Brockton has scored 13 points. The second, the third touchdown of the points. day for Brockton, all three of them on the ground. Darnell Campbell from 20 yards out, Rudy Harris from 37, and this one a two-yard keeper from Bob Sarinskis to give the boxers their first lead of the day, set up by that 41-yard pass from Bob Zerinskis to Steve Marciano. Now, let's see if Jimmy Butler can give them a nice long kick and a good tackle. They met one of the Brockton kickoff team to pin Dedham deep in their own territory. Not too deep a kick. The kick will go to about the 17-yard line. Joe O'Connor takes it there across the 30 and bouncing around to the 32-yard line. Stop there, Chris Campbell in on the hit. And a host of Brockton defenders. And Jay McGillis. Tacklers. So the Marauders with 3.52 on the clock will try to get an offensive drive together like they haven't had all day. And they'll have all the way from their own 33 to get there. We see that Colombo, Ammon Colombo has put Rudy Harris back in the defensive end. All the chips are on the table. Three minutes and 52 seconds remaining. Another Brockton Super Bowl victory. Eric Drukas, David Grind, Rudy Harris, Michael Lewis, Jay Bercy, Mike Thorson in on the defense. Let's Five watch. defensive backs for the boxers as well, looking for the pass. Mike Evans has Sawyer and Flynn behind him. And he'll go to the air. He'll go to the left side, deflected in. Oh, almost intercepted by Steve Marciano. He wants it 
an interference call, but if that pass was deflected, then that there won't be one. That one, and I believe it was deflected. Was it Rudy? I, if we had that on replay, we may catch that long arm of number 32 just deflecting that ball. But we do have a second down and 10 yards for Dedham. We're going to take another look at it to see who it was that got a piece of it. It probably was Rudy who's playing at that right defensive end. No, it was Tony Lewis. Tony Lewis. 75, Big Tony, Tony Lewis. Lewis. Second and 10, their own territory, the 33-yard line for Dedham. Brockton defense has stiffened so far the second half. Let's we'll see if they can keep it up. Evans in the flat to Sawyer. Hit by Chris Campbell and stopped. I Bill guess. McCoy came up to finish him off. So did David Grind, but it was the pursuit of Chris Campbell from the defensive end spot who stopped Sawyer with a gain, not no even gain. a gain, no a gain. loss of maybe a half a yard. And we have 327 and the clock is rolling. Third and 10, Dedham is forced into a passing situation, I believe. It seems that their number 44, their fullback, their money fullback, their money player, I should say, has tired somewhat, playing both ways at just about the entire ball game, Tim, as far as I can see. Not only both ways, Charlie, he's on the play for on the field for every play because he punts the ball, That's he right. kicks the ball, he kicks the extra points. This is a big play for Dedham and Brockton. Pass play. Evans to pass, fakes the pass, goes up the middle, and oh, nobody there. Had, oh boy, that was in the direction of nobody. Jay McGillis had the best shot and that would have been an amazing interception. Now, Dedham in a fourth down situation and 10, I'm sure, is going to kick this ball. It has to kick this ball. If they don't, they're going to give it to Brockton in their own territory about the 33-yard line. If they kick it off, they're going to kick two. Marciano and Rudy Harris, two outstanding punt returners. So let's see, is Marciano back there alone? There's Brockton a timeout wants to Brockton. call a timeout. Okay. That's their second timeout, Tim. The clock was stopped anyway, so there's, there's no loss in this. The clock is stopped on the incomplete pass. The uh, Marauders have used only one minute on this, a uh, little bit less than one minute on this drive as three consecutive incomplete passes have left us with 2.54 to go, and the boxer is on top by four, 20 to 16. Well, uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing a comeback by an outstanding high school football team. Get them has done a fine job here today. They took advantage of some breaks. Brockton, at this point, has the ball, well, should have the ball with 2.54 remaining in fourth and 10. It appears that Dedham would be punting the ball away. If they don't, they're taking an awful chance. However, we don't know in a... And once again, if the boxers do get the ball back on the punt, as we assume, there isn't a whole lot Dedham can do to stop the clock. They've used up three of their five uh, timeouts and have a long way to go to try to get back into this one. But we don't want to write it off just yet. So many strange no, things Hold have on. happened a today. A lot of things can happen today. We still got two minutes and 54 minutes, uh, seconds of exciting football. And Rudy Harris back deep by himself. Flynn's kick is a short one again. Bounces at midfield and takes a Brockton oh, bounce Brockton out bounce. of bounds at the 48-yard line, 47-yard line of Dedham. If so Dedham, again, the boxers take advantage of the break. If Dedham is, has a weak spot, it's their punting game. That's their weak spot today. They haven't had, they had one good kick in that was a fairly good, about 45 yards. I bet their average today is close to 20 yards per kick. Brockton has the ball, two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this football game. Dedham has two timeouts remaining. Brockton, as we said, has the ball with a first down, leading 20 to 16. I believe that Coach Armand Colombo is going to stick with his bread and butter. That means RH and DC. A couple of first downs, and this one's in the bag, assuming people can no hold mistakes, on to the ball. No fumbles. Oh. Zerinskis keeps it, bounces out to the a 45, flag, and a flag. A flag. What deep. is the flag for? The flag was thrown deep in the defensive yeah. secondary. Back judge. Is that a, a, a too much time penalty? I don't know what that is. It's going to be against Dedham as Bob Zerinskis claps oh, his he hands. Might, he might have had 12 line. men on the field, because that's the man that counts. That's the official that counts right. the players. Let's wait and see. It, that's exactly what it'll be. Oh, it's at a 15-yarder. They all participated. See, 12 men on the field, Tim, can be either a 5- or 15-yard penalty. If you have a situation where a player is trying to get off the field and doesn't make it, it becomes a 5-yard penalty. If the, ex, the boy is on the field, he's a 12th person participating in the play, it's a 15-yard penalty. Big break for Brockton. First down on the 29-yard line of Dedham. That is a very big penalty and a serious mistake made by the Dedham. Ouch, it certainly is. 
Zarenskis had picked up only about three yards on the carry, and now the boxers down to the 29-yard line. Rudy Harris with the ball, with a gain of about one clock running with 2.20 to go. Well, Rudy picked up about two yards on that. It'll be a second, shall we, eight or nine? Oh, let's call it second and, uh, second and nine. Timeout, and that's the fourth timeout by Dedham. They have one remaining. I would say that if Brockton is able to pick up one more first down with two minutes and 17 seconds remaining and one more de Dedham timeout, barring some ridiculous things, and as you said earlier, Tim, some ridiculous things have happened here this afternoon to make it a close football game, Brockton could emerge with their sixth Super Bowl victory. And again, by the time the people are watching this on Tuesday, uh, we will know the outcome. But right now, it's turned out to be a very exciting game, and it could be one of Brockton's sweetest victories of the season of many a year. You know, last year's Super Bowl with Woburn was, was not a terribly exciting game. Brockton was the much better team, and they handed it to Woburn pretty easily. The game three years ago against Natick was, but in an entirely different fashion. The boxers dominated the first half, took a 22 to nothing lead. Nada came back and controlled the second half and fell short a couple of times. The, the ending was as dramatic as they come. This has been an exciting game for an entirely different reason. It's been back and forth, strange plays, I, big plays, that, and mixed up calls. That Nada game was an interception on the goal line by, yes, it uh, was. Was it? Oh, I believe it was Mike Flamini. Flamini, that's what it was, Mike Flamini. Yeah, beautiful. Well, let's go. Now, Brockton is a second down in about nine. And about the 28 yard line of Dedham. There goes Darnell. Darnell Campbell pushing down to the 23-yard line. He'll be about four yards short of the first down. Darnell, <laughs> Mike, is ticking away, Tim, at 2 Mike Lewis, Mike Lewis stuck it to uh, number 86, Buster Smolak for Dedham as the Marauders call their last time out. Mike was, was a good five yards downfield beyond the play, and he just handed one to Buster Smolak. Let's watch the referee to see if, this, if he indicates that this is Dedham's final timeout. Let's see. Well, yes, he does. That's that's a signal for timeouts is being exhausted. Brockton has a third and about three, a long three, far a first down. If they can make this first down, I, I would say that uh, Dedham has, has seen the ghost. You have plenty of time in the parking lot to congratulate the players. I would say that a victory by Brockton today will be one of the sweetest in the history of Brockton High School. This is a school and a team with a long and storied history of uh, football success and athletic success and all sorts of success at Brockton High School, but it is the legendary football program that gets the most attention. And this team has, some people have called it uh, the best ever. And uh, there's no way of judging that, but the boxers on the field now. Oh, here he goes to for make the first their down. pitch for that claim. There goes Darnell and for the first Darnell down. Campbell He's stays the on his feet for the first down. I would down. say that the game Oh, wait a minute. Where have they got that? No, it's a fourth down. Oh, first it is down. a first down. Yes, it is a first down. I thought they were looking for the spot. The spot is down on the 11, 12, 14, 15 yard line. Armit Colombo is uh, doing a little dance on the sidelines. I would he has say been that the game is over. Firing the arms up in the air and. Uh, he's now talking things over with Bob Zerinskis, but he gets just as enthusiastic. Look at him go. That's it, and now all Bob Zerinskis has to do is put his, ah, boy, good old Brockton High School spirit. Coach Colombo, <laughs> it's a sweet victory for him. It's all right. the sweet of his career. Clock running, 135 to go. The boxers just trying to shut it down, and they'll do that, Zerinskis. Oh, 15-yard penalty right there. That's it. That he is spotted it. absolutely inexcusable. Inexcusable. Did he play? Blindsided right. Bob Zerinskis, and now the Another flags flag. will fly again. Uh-oh. Well, I think that was... Come on, boys. Keep your tempers under control. It looks it like a Brockton victory here. 16, 20 to 16. 60 Mike Marr, who uh, put the lick on Bob Zerinskis, who never even saw him coming. He had the knee down, and in high school football, that's all you need. They're showing the slow-mo on the uh, diamond vision up here. And... The hit right look there. At the hit. Yeah, oh, that's a boy. dangerous hit right in the rib area, the kidney area that's exposed from the rib pads. Unnecessary. Stupid. Brockton has won their second consecutive Super Bowl, third in four years, sixth overall. They will be six and, and three after this one. Let and me tell you this, Tim. I think of all of the victories, all of the Super Bowl victories in Brockton has had their share as we know. This has to be the most satisfying. It may well be, and that may hold true for Armin Colombo as well. Here's Bobby Zarinskis taking that pop. That's just. That we haven't like had the Wolf penalty enforced yet. What, what, what are we doing here? Now they're going to now they're going to march it off. The officials were conferencing, and they're going to mark the ball down at the 
nine-yard line. You know, except for that last play, Dedham had nothing to be ashamed of today. They Absolutely. played Brockton to a standstill for a good part of the game. Granted, they got some breaks, but because Brockton, with the character and the class and the ability and the superiority and, and the experience, rose to the occasion and came from adversity after adversity, Tim, and to come back to win this football game. There's a minute and 20 seconds remaining. Brockton has a first and goal on the five-yard line, and I don't know if Alvin Colombo is going to try to score again or if he's just going to have Bobby Zorinskis put his knee down. Yep. He will put the knee down, and that's a class move as well because from, from six yards out or whatever it, it is at this point, either one, uh, Campbell or Harris, could easily get in there and make it a 26 to 16 game, but it'll stay this way and flags fly again. Flags fly again. Four Whose fault is this? The this? We don't want to spoil a good football game, boys. Again, uh, there were some dead of players that uh, got a little rough after the play, and it uh, could go either way and the penalties this way. What's he unsportsmanlike against both teams? There's a Denham player down on the field as you see, I and see that. Uh, maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know if he was hurt on the play or in the scuffling afterwards. But regardless, 106 to go and the clock stops. I hope that Brockton is not participating in this so-called personal foul unsportsmanlike stuff because it, it doesn't do anybody any good. It tarnishes your reputation. And Brockton is above that type of play. They're, they're, They've been mocked men throughout the season since September when they were in the preseason poll of the USA Today. They were made number one. They've been mocked men. They've been insulted on the field. They've been attacked on the field. Uh, at the Waltham game last week, Tim Brockton stayed on the field at halftime. Do you know why they stayed on the field at halftime? Because they didn't want to go up that alleyway near the stands for fear that someone would throw a rock off their head. And uh, Bill Luciano, who is number 81 for Denham, being helped off the oh, field, he has still got some words for... Uh, for Brockton. Well, that's a 15-yard penalty against Brockton. Now, uh, I don't know who did what on that one, but it doesn't make any difference. I don't, the yeah, game I, is over. The clock is running. It's one minute and counting. Brockton has a uh, second down and goal on the 22-yard line. And Bob Zorinskis is just going to put his knee down again. Yes, that's this, all he's going to do, and there's nothing that Coach Lynch and Dedham can do about it. This should be the... No, he's going to give off to Rudy Harris, who's going to go... Oh, and, hey, oh that's down oh, Harris! Boy. Rudy scored his second touchdown of the day from 22 yards out. If you're looking for frosting on the cake, ladies and gentlemen, you just saw it in the form of Brockton's All-American back, Rudy Harris. You know what that is, Charlie? That's payback. That's uh, payback for the lick that Bobby Zerinskis took while on his knees a few moments ago. This and, uh, has been I don't, one of... I don't blame Brockton at all for deciding to hand the ball off on this one. No, they... they, they Dedham is now demoralized. The team is demoralized. The fans are demoralized. Let's look. Wow. And you know, Rudy, three people had a shot at it. Three people it. on that ice hole. There are photographers crawling around. And look at this. It looks like a post-game celebration, but we still have 38 seconds on the clock. And Jimmy Butler on to go for what should be his final extra point of this 1988. He'll be back next year to kick some more. And this one is good. The Brockton Boxers, 27, Dedham, 16. Brockton High School took over in the second half of this football game and said, gentlemen, this is how you play the game of football. Just sit back and watch. We'll show you. It looks like American Bandstand out in the middle of the field, all the dancing going on in the white jerseys. As the celebration begins, 38 seconds on the clock, the Boxers take a... 13-point deficit early on and turn it into an 11-point victory in the final minutes here. Who's going to, I don't know who's going to uh, celebrate more tonight, whether it's Bobby Zarinskis, or Roy Grew, or Joe DeMori, or Tommy Boyle, or Mark Costa. They're all, they're all going to share equally in this victory. Oscar Mercado, Jimmy Meister, <laughs> Peter Drukas, Mike Levine, play or not play, all of these boys, Troy Hampton, Mike Bertarelli, Eddie Vega, Brian Kilsby. They're all going to savor this victory as one of the sweetest in the history of Brockton High School. The reason, because they came up off the deck like true champions that they are. You'd like to be able to say you knew all along that they were going to do it, but Dedham put the well, fear into us. I knew all us. along they were going to do it, Tim. <laughs> the kickoff goes to Sawyer and bounces past him. I think he touched it, so he's got to touch it. He better. He's got to play with that. And oh, are they calling it a touchback? They call it a touchback. Yeah. Well, I guess it went through his leg untouched. Well, it's all academic at this point. The Dedham Marauders will take it over at their 20 with 35 seconds left to play. And uh, now we can only hope that the squads on the field don't mix it up at all like they did on the last series. We can 
Well, look, people tell me come out to see a couple of ball players. They saw a lot of football players, but of course, Donnell and Rudy getting all of the headlines. Uh, but Coach Colombo will tell you they don't run an inch without the line in front of them. But they saw two superb touchdown runs by Rudy, another superb touchdown run by Darnell, and they got their money's worth. Everybody, including the, the, Dedham, the Dedham fans, they saw that Brockton is for real. Down 13 to nothing and coming back to win 27 to 16. You know, when you look at football teams over the years at any level, high school, college, pro, whatever, Traditionally, the most exciting teams are passing teams. They're the ones who put the ball in the air. The Doug Flutie-led BC teams were the ones that would do anything at any time and keep the uh, opponents guessing and always be for an exciting game. This is one of the most exciting football teams you'll ever see, and it's dominated by its running attack. It just goes to show you how dominating that running attack can be. You know, that running attack is beautiful, but the one pass that Bobby Zarinskis completed was that beautiful pass to Stephen Marciano that gave Brockton the first and goal at the five-yard line. Such a crucial play. And it was executed almost perfectly. Stephen did have to turn around for it, but he still made the catch sure that sure fisted I don't think I've ever seen that boy drop a pass. But again, Brockton has now outscored the Dedham Marauders 20-3 to in the second half. They took over this football game and showed them how the game is supposed to be played. Up the middle goes... Dedham's number 11, a new uh, quarterback in, John Warren, a junior. That is probably the last play of the game, 25, 24, 23, remaining in the scoreboard. I don't think they'll even get another playoff. There's no need to. They're not going to score. They're not going to win. Uh, Brockton is going to be jubilant, and they deserve at least a, what a wonderful yeah. victory for the Brockton High School football program and the city of Brockton in particular, in general. Well, Charlie, we've never made a habit of picking most valuable players for games, and I wouldn't want to try to do it today. So many outstanding performances, and Bobby Toe with a somersault across the field sort of caps the whole thing for Brockton as the Boxers finish the season at 10 and one, take the Division I Eastern Mass Super Bowl and claim the number one ranking in Eastern Mass football coming from behind. And unbelievable fashion to knock off the Dedham Marauders, the top-ranked Dedham Marauders here at Sullivan Stadium this afternoon. And, uh, well, I, Tim, I don't know how many games we're ever going to broadcast, or even a few, but I don't think we're going to see, the, as we mentioned, the weird happenings that occurred here this afternoon. And most of them happened against Brockton. A, a Brockton High School to go off that field at halftime, losing 13 to 7, is a tribute to the team. I mean, the fact that all of those things occurred the negative things for Brockton, and then to come back and outscore the opposition and totally dominate them 20 to 3 in the second half, except with the exception of that fumble in the third period, Brockton didn't make a mistake. They played error free football because they had to play error free football. And they made no mistakes. The play selection was excellent. The execution was fine. The defense, defense rose was to the as occasion. good as it has been ever. And the second that half, I've seen them. and again, Dave Flynn, uh, is that the voice? Dave Flynn, number 44 in the second half was almost totally ineffective offensively and you you know you can't blame him for that he was worn out he's a guy that's done everything and uh, physically and emotionally led this Dedham team all year long with his 16 touchdowns and his 30 extra points he has been a force all season long leading Dedham to their Bay State League crown the boxers of course suburban league champs for the uh, heaven knows how many times now it's been the case but uh, the boxers prove as they set out to do early on that this was going to be their season. They will not finish the season number one ranked in the nation as they began it, but uh, there are a lot of those who will argue that there shouldn't be such rankings anyway since these teams never play each other. But they will leave knowing that they were among the best football teams in Brockton High School history, and that is saying something. Rudy Harris, Darnell Campbell, let's take a moment to look down the list of members of the class of 1989. We uh, have Joe DeMori, Darnell Campbell, Jay McGillis, Rudy Harris, Richard Wilson, Bill McCoy, Anthony DeGrace, Joe Lassard, Ray Marshall, Mike Thorson, Jim Kelleher, Michael Lewis, Chris Murphy, who left the game injured today, Bobby Toe, and Leon Stefferson. Okay, all good. seniors, all very big contributors to this outstanding season for the Brockton High School boxers. And, and to, uh, to this was as exciting as it Chris could. Murphy for two and a half for the bulk of the ball game. He went out in the middle of the second period, I believe, unable, and they had to pick up the slack. And Chris, 
is no mean, is no easy man to replace. He is just a, a, such a force on the football field, especially on defense. But Brockton did it. They did what they had to do. They stopped them cold, except for that field goal in the third period. And, well, th this is Brockton's sweetest Super Bowl victory by far. Perhaps. Ninth time in the Super Bowl, their sixth victory. And again, 17 years they've been playing this game. As you see, Armand Colombo with the plaque in hand. Leon Stefferson being hoisted by the cheerleaders of all people. And uh, the reporters swarming around this Brockton team. They have been uh, center of attention all year long, and that hasn't changed today. Patriots public relations man Brian O'Donovan down there with Armory Club. We'll take a moment before we sign off, too, to uh, thank the people at Sullivan Stadium, Denise Velez and the public relations department for the Patriots and for Sullivan Stadium here for uh, helping us get organized today. And uh, we thank Brockton Community Cable Television for providing the funding for Brockton High School football all year. The first time we were able to do road games as well as home games. We did all but two, all but the Levenster and uh, Rome Free Academy games for obvious reasons there. But uh, we thank them for that, the Continental Cablevision crew for their excellent work all season long. And uh, this Brockton High School team, we thank them for making it so exciting. A wonderful season. A tribute to the Brockton High School uh, head football coach, Armin Colombo, and course, his very capable staff. We, we cannot not say enough about Billy Devon. Mike Donovan, what an effort he puts in every day, along with Gene Marrow, Tony Gonzalez, Michael Hancock, Eddie Fitzgibbon, who handles a freshman. Uh, I, I might have forgotten somebody in the excitement here this afternoon. I don't mean to if I did. Uh, Mike Hancock, yes. It just... It just such a wonderful season, a wonderful way to end the season. Not to come out and dominate, as you said early, as they did last year against Wolven when they destroyed Wolven, they dissected him. They took every punch, they took every punch like a heavyweight fighter that the, uh, the opponent could give them. Whack, bang, slap, punch, bad break, uh, fall down, uh, fumble, uh, onside kick, onside kick, onside kick. They, all of these things went against them. Blocked punt, poor punt, uh, my God, and they come back and completely, and I mean totally, so effectively took over the second half and turned it into almost a clinic and beat them 27-16. to 16. That last touchdown by Rudy was a picture play, as we said earlier, Tim, that was the frosting on the cake. Well, again, I'll say the defense played as well as they ever have from the final three quarters of play, they allowed three points. Right, well, and the 13 points that they allowed early on you couldn't really blame the defense because the field position set up by some of those uh, strange happenings gave Dedham an easy opportunity to get into the end zone, and they made the best of it. But the Brockton defense was superb. The Brockton offense clicked when it had to. The big pass, you almost once a game throughout the season, there's one of those 40, 50, 60 yard passes from Zarinskis to Marciano, and the big running of Darnell Campbell and Rudy Harris, both of whom will be going on to bigger and better things in their college careers. And we wish them well. We wish well to all of the members of the Brockton High School football team. Charlie, I want to thank you. It's been another fun season. Oh, it's great stuff, especially when you have a team like this to work with. Well, we'll have lots more fun in the future. This is a team with much talent and uh, much promise for future years with a lot of young players that are going to set the world on fire as their predecessors have done. So we will look forward to that. And we look forward to Brockton High School basketball season, for which we'll be joining you throughout the uh, home schedule. And we'll have more about that if you keep your eye on uh, the Community Network Channel 3 and Brockton Channel 2 for information on that. In the meantime, we close out the football season again. Thank you for joining us all the way. We hope you've enjoyed the football coverage. For Charlie Petty and myself, Tim Cox, we uh, sign off for the Continental Cablevision crew. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time.